My name's Pippin! Pippa! And today, we're playing some Katawa Shoujo. A little bit more of a chill playthrough. And... Perhaps traditional playthrough compared to usual. Uh, I did a poll before stream. And you guys voted that we would do a serious playthrough without using a walkthrough. So, I'm just going to make the choices that I want to make. I might do a poll for like which girl we attempt to pursue. But yeah, record noise. Thank you. Hello, Rabbit. I'm glad you could join us today. Alrighty. Alrighty. Yeah, a true run. A true run. Let me... Come over there. And I will be catching up with Super Chats uh, during choice options. Like when, when options pop up on screen, that is when I will catch up with Super Chats. Wings, thank you! You can play games! Our visual novels games? We had a big argument about this chat. Roof Korean, thank you. I'm certain you'll make the correct choices to get the best girl route. If not, we'll riot. Cold acid, thank you. Clungy, best girl. Back on noise, thank you. Hello, Rabbit. I'm glad you could join us today. AK, thank you. Bringing back some memories with this one. Power Flint, thank you. Power Flint, thank you. I cannot believe you're playing this visual novel. It's such a good one. Literally changed my life, and I hope it leaves a good impression on you, too. Raziel, thank you. Lupus, thank you. Rex Tintar, thank you. I'm so happy that Redditors made this game. Let's fucking go, Reddit! Uh, Full Cat, thank you. This was one of the first VNs I ever played. Have fun. Kanakota, thank you for the five gippy bears! Thank you, thank you, thank you! Music and fiction, thank you! Pipkin pities the fool! The fool is the best girl! Oh, the wings, thank you! This looks like some high quality H2O! Reverse Jade, thank you! Don't ask why she's called Lemon Woman, it's a surprise! Zena, thank you! By five dollars, the Pippa gets Kenji like Proto Chorus! Eric Lowry, thank you! Can't wait to see who you end up going for! Love this game! Is that a phone? Thank you for becoming Big Pippi! No, thank you for becoming Big Pippi! Ready to raise up some girls tonight, Pippa? Heck yeah! Heck yeah! Alright, I got... I got two bottles of water. Liz, thank you for coming, baby. Me feel sorry. I got two bottles of water. Hopefully, I don't need any more than that. I'm gonna try and be proactive about sipping enough water while I'm doing this, so that way I don't mess up my throat. Just in case you work up a sweat. Now! Zazzy, thank you. Don't abuse the girls too much. <laughs> The word of today is woman. Alan Son, thank you for becoming Big Pippi. Okay, let me move over to stream elements. Uh, C9, thank you. Gonna take a guess that your choice is gonna be the half burnt toast girl. Paul Bendig, thank you. Crippled dating sim, let's go. I don't know what character. I tried playing this when I was younger, did not make it far at all. And so I am... I am excited to see... what all the fuss is about. Kini Bottom Feeder, thank you. Disabled Girls reminds you to eat your vegetables. Alrighty. Alrighty. Let's go! I tried to go for a more comfy vibe, too, with my desk set up. And how's the volume? Nice, peaceful music. Maybe we should do... Some audio filters? Ba ba ba. Oh, too much reverb. Uh, 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 <laughs> uh maybe? Maybe like this? This is kinda This is a nice reverb. A light breeze causes the naked branches overhead to rattle like wooden wind chimes. This is a popular retreat for couples in the summer. The deciduous trees provide a beautiful green canopy, far out of sight of teachers and fellow students. But now, in late winter, it feels like I'm standing under a pile of kindling. I breathe into my cupped hands and rub them together furiously to prevent them from numbing in this cold. Just how long am I expected to wait out here anyway? I'm sure the note said 4 p.m. Ah, yes, the note. Slipped between the pages of my math book while I wasn't looking. As far as cliches go, I'm more a fan of the letter in the locker, but at least this way shows a bit of initiative. As I ponder the meaning of the note, the snowfall gradually thickens. The snowflake, snowflakes silently falling from the white painted sky are the only signs of time passing in this stagnant world. The text is blocked. Oh, shoot.
Their slow descent upon the frozen forest makes it seem like time has slowed to a crawl. The rustling of dry snow underfoot startles me, interrupting the quiet mood. Someone is approaching me from behind. Oh, uh, what kind of voice do we do for this one? Um... Hi, Iso, you came? A hesitating, barely audible question. However, I recognize the owner of that dainty voice instantly. I feel my heart skip a beat. It's a voice I've listened to hundreds of times, but never as more than an eavesdropper to a conversation. I turn to face this voice, the voice of my dreams, and my heart begins to race. Well, I don't think when I played there were... CGs like this. Jagan, I think you're a Lily Best Girl. I feel like... Maybe I'm misremembering. Maybe it's because it was so long ago, but I feel like when I when I played this, there was no, um... There were no CGs like this. At least at the beginning. There always were? Oh. Okay, I just completely forgot then. Uh... Iwanako, I got a note telling me to wait here. It was yours? Damn it. I spent all afternoon trying to come up with a good line, and that was the result. Pathetic. Yes, I asked a friend to give you that note. I'm so glad you got it. A shy, joyous smile that makes me so tense I couldn't move a single muscle even if I tried. Ah. Ah. Oh. My heart is pounding now, as if it were trying to burst out from my chest and claim this girl for itself. Wah. Wah. So, uh, here we are, out in the cold. Once again, the wind stirs up the branches. The cacophonous noise is mu music to my ears. Iwanako flinches ever so softly against the gust of wind. As it passes, she writes herself, as if supported by some new confidence. Her eyes lock with mine, and she lazily twirls her long, dark hair around her finger. All the while, the anxious beating of my heart grows louder. My throat is tight. I doubt I could even force a word out if I tried. You see... I wanted to know... Oh. It's so tense. Do I need a... Do I need a... Ah! If you'd clap with me? I stand there, motionless, save for my pounding heart. I want to say something in reply, but my vocal cords feel like they've been stretched beyond the breaking point. Isa? I reach up to try to massage my throat, but this only spend sends spikes of blinding pain along my arms. Isa? Oh no. Yeah, he got that notice. He got written down as a death note. It's over. My whole body freezes, save for my eyes, which shoot open in terror. Doki doki waku waku. Death note. He didn't. He didn't hit throat day. What? <laughs> Experts baffled as to what happened. He saw. The beating in my chest suddenly stops, and I go weak at the knees. Don't skip throat day. What is throat day? <laughs> the world around me, the canopy of bare branches, the dull winter sky. Iwanako runs towards me. All these fade to black. 
The last things I remember before slipping away are the sounds of Iwanako screaming for help, and the incessant clatter of the branches above. Dragon of Zangu, thank you, Rabbit, for the fun times. I got fired last Monday. So I'm ready for the fields. Let's go! Person with Korean name, thank you. Is this KFC's new chicken pizza chitza stream? Yeah, that's me. Background noise, thank you. Rabbit's gonna get lucky if she can. Can I score up Dango Dango? Uh, God, she's so cute. I just, mm, my heart. Well, Dango Dango! Dango Dango Dango! Uh, also, congratulations on your debut. Great, thank you. A remaster of this that came out recently. KS RE. There's a remaster. I don't know anything about the remaster. And I don't think you, given that this is a visual novel about winning the hearts of disabled girls, this is probably about the as close to an official Face Connect game as we're ever going to get. Oh my god. Uh, Terminus Reed, thank you. I hope you enjoy the game. It's certainly unforgettable. The intro cinematic's really good. The intro cinematic is really... Really high quality. Um... Well, so thank you. Lily's the best girl. I will fight everyone in chat who says otherwise. Hanako, close second. Genuinely good weekend. Hope you enjoy it. Akarina Geek, thank you. Woo, best rabbit on best dating sim. Bikini Bottom Feeder, thank you. Disabled girl reminds you to eat your vegetables. Plus Saxon, thank you. Why is gushing over magical girls so hilarious? Good question. It's been four months since my heart attack. In that whole time, I can probably count the times I've left this ho hospital room unsupervised on one hand. Four months is a pretty long time when you're left alone with your thoughts. So I've had plenty of time to come to terms with my situation. Arrhythmia. A strange word. A foreign, alien one. One that you don't want to be in the same room with. A rare condition. It causes the heart to act erratically and occasionally beat way too fast. It can be fatal. Apparently, I've had it for a long time. They said it was a miracle that I was able to go on so long without anything happening. Is that really a miracle? I guess it's supposed to make me feel better, more appreciative of my life. It really didn't do anything to cheer me up. My parents think were my parents, I think, were hit harder by the news than I was. They practically had two hemorrhages apiece. I had already had a full day by then to digest everything. To them, it was all fresh. They were even willing to sell our house in order to pay for a cure. Of course, there isn't a cure. Because of the late discovery of this condition, I've had to stay at the hospital to recuperate from the treatments. When I was first admitted, it felt as if I was missed. For about a week, my room in the ward was full of flowers, balloons, and cards. But the visitors soon dwindled, and the, all the get-well gifts began trickling down to nothing shortly after. I realized that the only reason I had gotten so many cards and flowers was because sending me their sympathy had turned... been turned into a class project! Oh. <sighs> Maybe some people were genuinely concerned, but I doubt it. Even in the beginning, I barely had visitors. By the end of the first month, only my parents came by on a regular basis. Iwanaka was the last to stop visiting. After six weeks, I never saw her again. We never had that much to talk about when she visited anyway. We didn't touch the subject that was between us on that snowy day ever again. The hospital? It's not really a place I'd like to live in. The doctors and nurses feel so impersonal and faceless. I guess it's because they're in a hurry and they have a million other patients waiting for them, but it makes me feel uncomfortable. For the first month or so, I asked the head cardiologist every time I saw him for a rough estimate of when I'd be able to leave. He never answered anything in a straightforward way, but told me to wait and see if the treatment and surgeries worked. So, I idly observed the scar that those surgeries had left on my chest, slowly change its appearance over time, thinking of it as some kind of an omen. I still ask the head cardiologist about leaving, but my expectations are low enough now that I'm not disappointed anymore when I don't get a reply. The way he shuffles around the answer shows that there is at least some hope. At some point, I stopped watching TV. I don't know why, I just did. Maybe it was the wrong kind of escapism for my situation. I started reading instead. It was a small library at the hospital, although it was more like a storeroom for books. I began working my way through it, one small stack at a time. After consuming them, I would go back for more. 
I found that I liked reading, and I think I even became a bit addicted. I started feeling naked without a book in my hands. But I loved the stories. That was what my life was like. The days became increasingly harder to distinguish from each other, differing only by the book I was reading and the weather outside. It felt like time blurred into some kind of gooey mass I was trapped inside instead of moving within. A week could go by without me no really noticing it. Sometimes I'd pause in realization that I didn't know what day of week it was. But other times, all the things that surrounded me would painfully crash into my consciousness through the barrier of nonchalance I had set up for myself. The pages of my book would start to feel sharp and burning hot and the heaviness in my chest would become so hard to bear that I had to put the book aside and just lay down for a while, looking at the ceiling as if I was going to cry. But that happened only rarely. And I couldn't even cry. Depressing. I wonder if the writers had been in the hospital or if they kind of just freestyled? This is why people stopped visiting him. What the heck? <laughs> Today, the doctor comes in and gives me a smile. He seems excited, but not very. It's like he's trying to make an effort to be happy on my behalf. My parents are here. It's been a few days since I've last seen them. Both of them are even sort of dressed up. Is this supposed to be some kind of special occasion? It's not a party. There is this ritual the head cardiologist has. He takes his time, sorting his papers, then setting them aside as if to make a point of the pointlessness of what he just did. Then he casually sits down on the edge of the bed next to mine. He looks me in the eyes for a moment. Hmm. <clears throat> Hello, Hisao. How are you today? I don't answer him, but I smile a little. Back at him. I believe that you can go home. Your heart is stronger now, and with some precautions, you should be fine. We have all your medications sorted out. I'll give your father the prescription. The doctor hands a sheet of paper to my dad. His expression turns wooden as he reads it quickly. So many. I take it from his hand and take a look for myself. Feeling numb, how am I supposed to react to this? The absurdly long list of medications stares back at me from the paper seems insurmount- oh, Staring back at me from the paper seems insurmountable. They all blend together in a sea of letters. This is insane. Side effects, adverse effects. Contradictions and dosages are listed line after line with cold precision. I try to read them, but it's so futile. I can't understand any of it. Attempting to only makes me feel sicker. All this for the rest of my life, every day? I'm afraid that this is the best we can do at this point. However, new medications are always being developed, so I wouldn't be surprised to see that list fade over the years. Years? What kind of confidence booster is that? I'd have felt better if he hadn't said anything at all. Also, I've spoken with your parents, and we believe that it would be best if you don't return to your own s your old school. What? Please calm- oh, Please calm down, Hiso. Listen to what the doctor has to say. Calm down? The way he says it tells me he knew full well that I wouldn't like it. Am I going to be homeschooled? Whatever my concern shows, it's ignored. We all understand that your education is paramount. However, I don't think that it's wise for you to be without supervision. At least, not until we're sure that your medication is suitable. So, I've spoken with your parents about a transfer. It's a school called Yamaku Academy that specializes in dealing with disabled students. Disabled? What? Am I? It has 24-hour nursing staff and it's only a few minutes from a highly regarded general hospital. The majority of students live on the campus. Think of it as a boarding school of sorts. It's designed to give students a degree of independence while keeping help nearby. Independence? It's a school for disabled kids. Don't try to disguise that fact. If it was really that free, there wouldn't be a 24-hour nursing staff, and you wouldn't make a hospital being a nearby a selling point. Of course, that's only if you want to go, but your mother and I aren't really able to homeschool you. We went out there and had a couple of weeks back. Oh, we went out, 
We went out there and had a look a couple of weeks back. I think you'd like it. It looks like I don't really have a choice. Compared to the other heart problems, people with your condition usually tend to live long lives. You'll need a job one day, and this is a good opportunity to continue your education. This isn't an opportunity. Don't call it an opportunity. Don't call it a goddamned opportunity. Well, you should be excited at the chance to go back to school. I remember you wanted to return to school, and while it's not the same one, a special school, that's... an insult. That's what I want to say. It's a step down. It's not where you think. All of the students there are pretty active in their own sort of way. It's geared towards students that can still get around and learn, but just need a little help in one way or another. Your father's right. And many of the graduates of the school have gone on to do amazing things. A person doesn't have to be held back by their disability. One of my colleagues in another hospital is a graduate. I don't care. A person doesn't have to be held back by their disability. That's what a disability is. I really hate that something so important was, so de was decided for me. But what can I do about it? A normal life is out of the question now. It's funny. I'd always thought my life was actually kind of boring. But now I miss it. I want to protest. I want to blame this lack of reaction on shock or fatigue. I could easily yell some- yell out something now. Something about how I can go back to school anyway, but... No. I don't say anything. The fact is, I know now it's futile. I look around the room, feeling very tired of all this. The hospital, the doctors, my condition, everything. I don't see anything that would make me feel any different. There really isn't a choice. I know this. But the thought of going to a disabled school, what are those even like? As much as I try to put a positive spin on this, it's very difficult. <laughs> I mispronounced futile once, and then I was like, I gotta stick to it. But I, <laughs> I feel weird saying futile. But I guess it's still, it's still correct, right? The dogs are so angry. But let me try. A clean slate isn't a bad thing. That is all I can think of to get me through this. At least I still have something. Even if it's a special school, it's something. It's a fresh start, and my life isn't over. It would be a mistake to just resign myself to thinking about that. Thinking that, whatever. At the very least, I'll try to see what my new life will look like. You're saying it right? Futile? Futile? I don't know. I don't know. Soundwave, thank you. Kaiser Wilhelm, thank you. Doug, thank you. This is my first VN. It follows flower... And it... Flowers for Algernon me on other visual novels. Certified hood classic. Act 1. Life Expectancy. NG fan, thank you. Fun fact, ED medication is heart medication. MC is popping little blue pills. This explains much of his horn dog behavior. Background noise, thank you. Sell some on the sly at school. Selka Alpaca, thank you. I'm about to backseat so hard. Ken Ashcorp, thank you. I hope that she goes for the one true waifu around this game. And then to the rooftop with your best bro and absolutely not an incel. Enjoy the stream, chat. The guy from this looks like the guy from Class of 09. I wonder, I wonder if Class of 09 did that intentionally? But it's all, like, based on the same trope, right? So. Cold Acid, thank you. Shout out to Raid. Rip my dude. This is the white Oh, there we go. Oh, ah, there we go. Zenimus, thank you. So this is cripple porn game. Oh my god. Uh, Zafu, thank you. This game is connected with a lot of youth that were in a rough place. I found... I found memories of it. One more played, though. It was a different time. Very thank you. Damn, Pippa, you killed him already? That was the fastest bad end I've ever seen. I'm impressed! What do you mean? Shut up. Can I come thank you? Where's... The option to genuflect? Carolyn Jane Evermore, thank you. This game and Hanukkah's Wrath actually helped me get over my... Past and my own scars. Both emotional and physical. Love to see you play. Hell yeah. Kenji's more based. The gate looked far too pompous for what it, it was. In fact, gates in general seem to do that, but this one especially so. Red bricks, black wrought iron, and gray plaster assembled into a hole that didn't feel welcoming at all. I wondered if it looked like what a gate for a school should look like, but couldn't really decide. Probably no. Of course, I didn't want to get stuck on thinking about the gate for too long, so I entered through it with a brisk pace that felt surprisingly good. Moving forward feels good. 
So I walk towards the main building of Yamaku Academy with this brisk pace. I'm alone, as my parents are taking my stuff to the dorms, and there's supposed to be someone waiting for me. The grounds are incredibly lush, filled with green. It doesn't feel like the kind of grounds a school would have. More like a park, with a clean walkway going past trees, and the smell of fresh-cut grass and all other park-like things. Words like clean and hygienic pop into my mind. It makes me shudder. I shake them off. Stay open-minded now. It's your new life. You have to take it as it comes. That's what I tell myself. Game B jams too loud? Is that a bit better? Is that a bit better? Blah, 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 blah. A few big buildings loom behind the leafy canopies. Too big and too many for just a school. Everything seems off. It's different from what I thought I knew about schools. It's an uncanny valley. Even though I was told this is my new school, in the back of my head, it doesn't feel like one. I wonder if the feeling is real or caused by my expectations of a school for the disabled. Speaking of that, I don't see anyone else here. It's kind of eerie. It makes me wish there was somebody here so I could anchor myself to something tangible, instead of having this feeling that I stepped into another dimension. The trees hum with the wind and the green hues flashing all around me catch my attention. It makes me think about hospitals again. How they say that the operating rooms are painted green because green is a common color. So why am I feeling so anxious despite all this greenery? Hmm. Only after I stand in front of the haughty main building, I surprise myself by realizing why the gate bothered me. It was the last chance I had to turn back. Even if I had no life I could return to. But still, after entering, there was absolutely no way I could go back anymore. Feeling nervous, and with this realization set in my head, I open the front door. A tall man with bad posture notices me as I enter. We're the only people in the lobby, so it's only logical. He's kinda handsome. You must be... Ni... Na... Niki... Nakai. So you are. Excellent. I'm your homeroom and science teacher. My name is Muto. Welcome. We exchange a handshake that is neither firm nor sloppy, and he looks at his watch. That guy has seen some stuff. And she says, Why? Leave me alone! You can't date the teacher. Sad. This is a problem, chat. This is a problem with visual novels set in schools, is you can never date the teachers. Somebody's here, I'll thank you. I mean, it's the best girl, and I will die on this hill. Oops. Ah, got distracted. The head nurse asked you for a brief check in visit, but there's no time for that now. Oh, should I go later? What, chat? Shut up. Yes, afternoon is probably fine. We should get going and introduce you to the rest of the class. They're waiting already. Play Persona, then. <laughs> waiting for me. I don't really like being the center of attention, but I guess it's inevitable in a situation like this. Somehow, not knowing what is waiting for me makes me feel really nervous. Thinking of this, I almost miss what the teacher is saying. Do you want to introduce yourself to the class? Um... Mm. Let's be let's be Genki. Let's be let's be a good student and we'll impress everybody and we'll be very optimistic about our new life and that way the cute girls will like us more. Yeah, sure. I mean, isn't that normal? Of course, but not everyone likes to be at the center of attention. I'm probably one of those people, but I guess I should be the one to give the first impression of myself. Right, but it's no problem. Let's go then. My heart is pounding in my chest and it keeps me thinking about my condition as I follow the teacher up the stairs. The third down... The third door down. The third floor corridor is marked as the classroom for class 3-3. Mudo opens the door and enters. Ooh, ooh, ah, oh, he's freaky! He's freaky! Look at his teeth! Ah! Good morning, everyone. Sorry I'm late again. 
I hesitate for a split second at the door, freezing on the spot. Ah, get a grip! This is a big step, I know that. But there isn't any point to worrying so much about it. At least not this soon. There they are! It's the girls! Wait, does she have heterochromia? Chad, does this one in the back have heterochromia? This guy, I think he's blind. He's got a cane. This is the this is the half burnt girl. I'm not sure about this one. This one's Haruhi Suzumiya. Um This one kinda has more blob face. Um hmm. Bacon girl? Wrong? Oh, did I? I'll, I'll remember if I read this. I follow the teacher into the classroom and look around. Partially so I won't have to meet the curious gazes of my new classmates. It's pretty spacious. The ceiling is unusually high and there's lots of space left over around and in between the desks. An entire wall taken up by blackboards and the high old-fashioned windows only make it seem larger. The students' desks are just standard wooden desks with a shelf underneath for books and wooden chairs with metal frames. Simple and efficient. I stop walking in front of the classroom and face the other students. They all look like normal... They all look normal, like students in any other school. But then, why would they be here? They're probably like me and have something wrong with them. Only, it's just not immediately obvious. Then, I notice that one of the girls seems to be missing the thumb of her right hand. It's a little jarring. Despite the natural tendency to listen when someone's talking about you, I tune out of the teacher's speech halfway through while he introduces me to the class. I notice a flash of dark hair and see that someone is looking at me. A girl with a really long, straight hair. It is pretty eye-catching. As she sees me looking back at her, she covers her face with her hands as if to make her invisible. The Pink hair has such main character energy! Everybody else has such normal hair color and like pretty like normal hairstyle. And then and then she's got these massive drills and bright pink hair. <laughs> There's one boy with a cane leaning against the lockers at the rear of the class. It's weird seeing someone so young with a cane. Another girl seems to be making some weird hand motions. Sign language? She peers over at me over the rims of her glasses, then goes back to whatever she's doing. She's kind of cute. So is the cheery-looking girl with the pink hair sitting next to her. She's really hard to miss. I don't know how I didn't notice her the moment I walked in. Please welcome our newest classmate. He claps his hands and so does everyone else, except one girl in the first row who has only one hand. I cringe a little, but hide it by bowing in thanks for this applause I did not deserve. Why does she wear glasses if she's deaf? What? What? What do you mean, why does she wear glasses if she's deaf? What? <laughs> what? <laughs> it's a simple question. <laughs> <laughs> you can't just ask that. <laughs> what? Okay. Okay. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> Don't worry. He's a little special. <laughs> got me. A collective silence tells me that I should open my mouth now. So, I'm Hisao Nakai. And after that? My hobbies are reading and soccer. I... <laughs> not anymore, they're not. I hope to get along well with everyone, even though I'm a new student. And after that? I'm being so boring. This is exactly like every self-introduction ever. I should say something more. Something more exciting. I end up saying nothing. And the teacher picks up from there. Everyone seems to be satisfied, even with what little I said, though. A few girls are whispering to each other, throwing glances at me. It could have gone worse. Mm. 
I listen to the teacher as he drones about getting along with letting my gaze... What? Oh, while letting my gaze sweep across the classroom. Everyone seems to be listening to him intently, and when he's done, they clap their hands again, which feels like a weird thing to do. The first row girl claps on this round, with her one hand against her other wrist that ends in a bandaged stump. Makes me feel a little bad. Let's get a round of applause! Ooh, <laughs> Ooh. She can't clap. We're going to be doing some group work today, so that'll give you a chance to talk with everyone. Is that okay with you? Yeah, it's fine with me. That's good. You can work with Hakamichi. She's the class representative. She can explain anything you might want to know. And who else would be able to do that better, right? He stumped! Eh. How could I know? The teacher passes out the day's assignments and announces that we will be working in groups of three. It hits me that I don't know who Hakamichi is. Slow. The teacher seems to catch my helpless expression. Oh, right. Hakamichi is right there. Shizune Hakamichi. As he calls out her name, the cute bubbly looking girl with bright pink hair and gold eyes waves her hand at me. I take a seat next to her by the window. Oh, the true one ain't clapping! No! <laughs> hey, I guess you're Hakamichi, right? It's nice to meet you. What? I'm caught off guard by her laughter. I hate Shizune so much. Why do you, why do you hate her? Why do you hate her? It's nice to meet you too, but I'm not Hakamichi. I'm Misha. This is Hakamichi Shitam. Giggling, Misha points to the girl next to her. The one I saw using sign language before. It looks like she has been staring at me this whole time. She nods once nonchalantly to show that she acknowledges my presence. But only barely. She has short yet carefully neatly brushed hair. A pair of oval-shaped glasses balanced on the tip of a dainty nose. And dark blue eyes that seem to alternate every few seconds between analytical and slightly bored. It's nice to meet you. I guess I don't have to do a voice for this one. She immediately looks at Misha, who smiles and makes a few quick gestures with her hands. Hakamichi nods and makes a few gestures of her own. <laughs> I start to wonder if the teacher was messing with me, saying things like, you'll be able to talk with people, and who better to explain things to you. I can see you're a little confused, right? Right? But I understand why you would think I was Shitan. Shichan is deaf, so I'm the person who translates things back and forth for her. I'm like an interpreter. She says it's nice to meet you, too. You're the new student, aren't you? Well, Shichan, of course he is. If he wasn't, he would have been standing up there for no reason, right? Right? He seems like a very interesting person, doesn't he? We knew there was going to be a new student, but we didn't know you would be here today! So soon, Hitan, right? Hitan? Yep, it fits, doesn't it? Did I say it out loud? It's just a surprise. I've never liked that nickname. I, I don't really see how. It fits! You look just like I imagined! <laughs> That's a cute expression. <laughs> so smug! So smug! <laughs> yeah, you look just like a Hitan! I wonder why everyone seems to think so. Hakamichi taps her fingers on the desk to get Misha's attention. They gesture back and forth to each other excitedly, their hands a blur. Misha's disability is that she's Pippa! Shut up! Misha seems a little overwhelmed. Oh, shoot. Hold on, let me take a sip. Ah! Shichan wants you to know that she's the class rep, so 
So if there's anything you need to know, you can feel free to ask her. <laughs> so awkward. So awkward. Misha's disability is definitely lesbian. <gasps> what? Do you like the school so far? We can show you around a little if you haven't had the time to walk around and familiar familiarize yourself with it. <laughs> wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> Misha stumbles from the hard word a bit, <laughs> making it stick out in her otherwise fluid translation. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, that'd be pretty helpful. Yeah, I just kind of came straight to class today. Oh, oh she's pissed at us! Why is she angry at us? What the hell? Why is she mad? That's no good. You should always try to learn as much as you can about where you're going before you go there. Not just with school, either. Always. Even if it's a trip to the convenience store. Really, Shicha? <laughs> learn about where you're going. I guess I didn't bother to do that. Nor just didn't care enough to do so. I didn't look forward to this. Even if I committed myself to go along with it half-assedly. But anyway... I don't say anything, and Misha signs something that ends in a shrug. What was that? It seems like it was about me. I feel like slumping over in my seat. Both of them are smiling, but that shrug hit me unexpectedly deep. You look down. Are you okay? Don't take it the wrong way, please! I hate it when people are afraid to ask questions. That's how people learn things, by asking! Asking for help is perfectly normal, as much as needing help. Stop looking like you just failed a test! The, the weird pauses... <laughs> Alright. Ah, and another thing! You don't have to call Shichan something so formal like Hakamichi or Class Rep all the time! <laughs> oh, cute! 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 Oh, man, they hit it out of the park with this girl's expressions. So cute. <laughs> okay, maybe that's too casual. Maybe seasoning would be more appropriate. Whoa. Whoa. The music cut out. The music cut out. Yep, yep. Season 8 is fine. <sighs> okay, that would be a lot easier for me. I feel a lot more at ease. Both of them seem so friendly. So I feel like an idiot for being so apprehensive earlier. Especially about Shizune, who I assumed would be all business. Well, she still seems like that. Just less so, I guess. Huh? Oh, right, we haven't even touched the assignment! We should start work now, or Shitan will get mad. The assignment is also kind of long, so we should start now if we want to finish it before the end of class. <laughs> that too! She's Nick glares at the two of us impatiently. I don't need to know sign language to understand that. Okay, okay, I get the message. We can take a walk around the school grounds together. It's a nice day today, okay? The assignment is actually very challenging to get through, combining aspects of being both difficult and unnecessarily long. Still, we finish it a few minutes earlier than anyone else in the class, despite our late start. Shizune and Misha are really capable. They're quite different, though. The class rep is as calm and professional as she looks. Well, Misha is a lot more playful and girlish. Not to mention a little more easily distracted. To be honest, the two of them did most of the work. I feel guilty about that. 
The clock tower bells rings. Ah, the clock tower bells ring. Signaling the end of the period. Time for lunch. Without knowing what else to do, I follow Misha, who is beckoning me into the hallway and down the stairs. We descend even below the lobby where I met Muto, down to the bottom floor. Just like everything in this school, the cafeteria seems too spacious and oddly modern in contrast to the classic exterior. Its big windows open to the courtyard, towards the main gate. It's the cafeteria! Her enthusiastic statement of the obvious makes people around us stare. But Misha doesn't seem to care, so we proceed to the line. There's a rather long list of menu options, which seems great until I realize that many of them are to accommodate students who need special diets. How nice. It almost feels like I'm back at the hospital. Eating portions measured with scientific precision to meet the needs of the patients. I pick something at random and follow Shizune to a table, sitting opposite of her. These long pauses throw me off so badly! As I nibble indifferently at the food I'd rather not eat, Misha pokes me in the side to get my attention and points to Shizune. Ah, oh, the voices! I don't understand sign language, so the point escapes me. God, her face is so cute. Her face is so cute, Dad. Maybe looking at a person who talks to you is proper and polite? Do you want to know something? What? About anything! We're your guide, so you should ask us if there is something! Hmm, I wonder. But she's an ace dead. That's so rude! That's so rude! You just ask people why they wear glasses? I think I got everything I need to know. Ask about the library. <gasps> can we, can we find, can we find a cute bookworm girl? One! No, I'm gonna ask about the library. The char the main character, he's out, he likes, he likes, uh, he likes the library. Maybe we can encounter another character there. Oh yeah, is there a library in the school? Lately, I've gotten into reading a lot, so I'd like to check it out. Misha gives the kind of frown that makes it clear she doesn't consider reading a healthy hobby, but then picks up her smile again. There is! It's in the second floor! We can show it to you sometime! Thanks. I return to my food while the girls talk between themselves. Misha and she's the name, sign back and forth very animatedly. Throwing sideways glances at me, but Misha refrains from translating. Maybe they're talking about secret girl stuff or something. I quickly notice conversation in sign is not enough to fill a silence. What? Oh. What? Oh. What? Oh. Oh. We arrive in the classroom early, but we're not the first. There she is! The bird girl! That dark-haired girl I noticed before slumped over her desk at the last row. She jumps a little when Misha crashes into the room with the elegance of a rhino. She shrinks deeper into her seat. I can feel her tension all the way from here, as if we were, as if she were slowly turning into stone from just our presence. Misha and Shizune either don't notice or don't mind it, as they walk directly past her to their seats and begin to converse. I'm left wondering about her, even when the classroom slowly fills with other students, and finally the teacher. Getting into the rhythm of school feels strange. It's as if my brain remembers how this is done, but my body doesn't. Towards the end of the class, I start yawning and counting the minutes left. I shouldn't be this tired on my first day of school. Maybe it's the long time spent in the hospital that made me feel like this. I'm even feeling physically weak and lifeless. Jet, stop posting bacon emojis! Oh my god! That's so wrong! That's so wrong! Don't post bacon emojis! What's wrong with you people? <laughs> what the? She's crispy now! That's so wrong! <laughs> Zuko Wolf! So messed up. Everyone loves bacon, though. <laughs> Before long, the final bell rings. 
school is finally over for the day. Beside me, Misha and Shizune are having a short conversation. After a bit of deliberation, Misha turns to me. Unfortunately, we can't stay in Shuyo around today, Hitan. We've got to hurry already, since there's a lot of work for us to do. You'll find your way around here. I'm sure of it. Uh, wait. The teacher said I'd have to see the nurse. Where do I have to go? Is that so? We can at least show you that much. Come on. The nurses have their own building, so we have to go outside. We join the flow of students making their way down the stairwell and outside, with the girls pointing out the other senior classrooms in the same hallway as ours. Can we date the nurse? I wish. When we get outside, the girls make their way to the smaller building right next to the school. It's built in the same style, so it looks like it's actually part of the main building. This is the auxiliary building here! There's a lot of official and important stuff inside, like the Yamaku Foundation office and all the nurses' offices. They even have a swimming pool! How is that official? <gasps> Don't make it be like that! Now I feel self-conscious! Now, now I feel self-conscious! What the hell? What the hell? Nurse and teacher routes in school-based dating sims are always the best, chat. They're always they're always the best, all right? Leave me alone. Anybody who disagrees can die mad about it. Don't be silly, Hitan. It's for physical therapy, of course. Anyway, all the nursing staff facilities are in there, too. The head nurse's office is on the first floor. You'll be fine from here, right? We'll be going then. See you tomorrow. Yeah, thanks. Bye. A whole building for stuff that has nothing to do with the actual education. I guess it's necessary for a place like this. I walk in, hoping that this really will be only a quick visit like the teacher said. On a white door on the left is a green cross with the text Head Nurse and a nameplate. A voice from the inside responds to my knock almost immediately but I can't quite make it out. It sounded a bit like an invitation to open the door, so I invite myself further in. Oh, I hate that! I hate that! I hate that when you don't know if they're actually, like, inviting you in or not, and it's like, do I open the door? Usually when it's something like that, I just pretend I didn't hear it the first time, right? Like, I pretend I didn't hear anything and, and wait for, like, a second... Yeah. The room is not large and it smells strange. A friendly-looking man turns around on his office chair to face me as I enter. His desk is neat and tidy. But the bin under the table is overflowing with used medical utensils, and there are at least a dozen cuff coffee cup rings lingering on the desk. Wait, no, this guy looks like a creep. I'm getting weird vibes. I do like white coats, but this is giving weird vibes. Yeah, nurse male. Sad. Sad. If there's anything Yandere Dev got right, it was the nurse in his game. What? Oh my god, Leah. Hello there, what can I do for you today? He is young looking and sort of rugged, but the dimples in his cheeks wash away the oppression when he smiles. Um, are you the nurse? He smiles like a person who has heard his- Oh fuck. He smiles like a person who has heard this very same question hundreds of times. Why yes I am. It says so on the door, no? You can call me by my name or just the nurse, like everyone else. Of course. I shake off my confusion, realizing I probably should grab his extended hand. His handshake is rather firm and friendly. Right. Uh, I'm a new student, and my homeroom teacher told me to come and meet you. My name is Hisao Nakai. His eyes light up with the revelation, and he snaps his fingers. Oh, you're that Nakai. I was just reading your file this morning. Some kind of chronic arrhythmia and related congenital heart muscle deficiency, right? He gestures me to sit down in a vacant armchair in front of his desk. Uh, yes. Good. Well, you've probably been briefed about the school enough, so I'll just go over this quickly. We have all kinds of facilities available, mostly physical therapy and such. There's always someone from my staff around, even at night, so never hesitate to call us if there's a problem. The famous 24-hour nursing staff. Wow, this is like a hospital. 
Well, not exactly. For instance, we don't do brain surgery here. His joke feels so out of place that I'm left thinking why he even said it. Yeah, just that it's really weird to have so many medical people out of school. You'll get used to it. I'm not sure of that myself, but I don't let the nurse know it. Now, let me find your file again. While he searches for something from his computer and shuffles stacks of papers around, I let my gaze wander around the room. It's the epitome of generic, I'd like to say. Beige walls and ceiling, dark gray laminate flooring, and all the equipment you'd expect from a school nurse's office. Given the ridiculous educational posters are hanging on all four walls, reminding me to eat properly, three times a day, and all from the food groups. A myth! A scam! Sorry. Smiling, the nurse draws a thick file from a stack of similarly thick files and opens it. So, you already have medication for the arrhythmia. Just remember to take your pills every morning and evening, or it won't help much. Apart from that, do you do any sports? Rash stuff like, I don't know, boxing? He grins to his own joke, but I don't. Uh, well, I played soccer occasionally with some classmates. Alright, I'm afraid I'm going to have to recommend you refrain from doing that. At least, for the time being. Oh. My lack of reaction makes him raise an eyebrow, but really, I'm not too bothered by him forbidding me to kick a ball around. I guess I never did it out of a burning passion for the sport. Just to have something to do. Any kind of concussion might be very dangerous to your heart, and risking another attack is not a good idea. Was the previous one caused by a sudden concussion to the chest area? There's no mention of the cause in your papers. Uh, not exactly. I sidestep the question acceptably, and he glances at me over his papers with a more serious expression on his face. Still, you need to keep your body healthy, so some exercise would do you some good. We have physical therapy and such available, as I said, but I don't think you really need such heavy measures. Just get some light exercise regularly. Ahaha! Uh -huh. Do any cute girls want to help me get some exercise? <laughs> Sorry. Brisk walks or even light jogging, jumping rope, that sort of thing. Swimming, maybe? There's a pool here. So I was told. You were! Very good. At any rate, I'm sure you've been told this before. You just need to take care not to overexert yourself. He wags his finger to emphasize this point. No need, really. I've heard this a thousand times already. Absolutely no unnecessary risks. Take care of yourself. Okay. He goes over my papers one more time and sets them back on the desk, obviously content. Good, that's it then. Come meet me if you ever need something. I mush it out before I even realize it. A quick visit indeed. Death by Snoo Snoo? What? I end, I end up standing in front of the main building in the auxiliary building, although, to my eyes, they still look one and the same. It's the first real look I get at the other students, so I watch people coming out of the school, going towards the gate or the dorms. Everyone seems to know where they're going. And I still keep thinking that most of them don't look too special for being students at a special school. And again, neither do I. Does that make me one of them? One of us? Hmm. I should go somewhere too, to prevent me from getting lost. It's around dinner time, but I feel tired instead of hungry. The wariness in me only grows as I trudge towards the dorms, set a little way apart from the main building complex. There's a garden of sorts between the school and the dorms. Shrubbery, flowers, and that overbearing smell of fresh-cut grass that fills the atmosphere. It dawns on my tired mind that the smell feels novel because I haven't been outside at all for so long. The dorm building is big and made of red brick. Like the others, it feels way too pompous for what it is, so I push forward, going inside. <laughs> Wrong button. What is with this exit sign? Is this, is this actually how exit is written? In Japanese or something? What is this? And Lucifer Francis, thank you so much for the raid. Thank you, thank you. Ooh. Yeah, is that a mahjong tile? What is that? Chat, what monzo is this? 
It takes more time than necessary to push out the key I was given from my pocket. Room 119. Despite the ornate exterior, the inside of the dorm is fairly new, functional, and boring. Just like in the main building, the halls and doors are wide to accommodate wheelchairs. The same goes for the elevators at the ends of the hallway. I poke my head around the corner of the common room door. Inside, a few students are watching the television. Okay, I'm gonna interrupt. All the BGs are just filtered photographs by Debs. Exactly, cold acid, because that's 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 the Ren Pi Kino. That's the Ren Pi way, chat. Chat is the best thing. It is the best thing playing like little little tiny freeware indie uh, uh, visual novels and just analyzing like the different kinds of ways that they filter background photos, right? Like, I remember there's like the oil painting function. A lot of people do that one, the little oil painting one where it makes it, everything a little bit more of a blur. This one, I think, is this like, uh, is this like the, uh, 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 cartoon, um, man, this is like a cartoon one. I can't remember the name of it. But yeah, I remember, I remember people back in the day would post like free visual novel backgrounds for people to use and they'd just be they'd just be stock photos that people applied like oil filter oil oil painting filters to and stuff now this is before ai this is it's not social no it's not social posture posterized is it posterized i don't know i don't know but yeah it's an effect in photoshop artistic blur ah i remember there being guides for gimp and paint.net but yeah anyways anyways Inside, a few students are watching the television. One nods and gives a quick hello before turning back to the TV. Seems that only the girls around here are sociable. I suppose that's perfectly fine with me. I climb down the stairs to the upper floor. Here, small corridors branch off from the main hallway. Each of these minor halls seems to have a toilet and a shower, as well as four rooms. About halfway down the hall, I spy room 119. The name plates on the rooms adjacent to mine are blank. I guess there are just two of us here. Light shines from below the door of room 117, so I knock lightly. Hello? Is anyone home? From inside, I hear a few movements, and then the clicking of way more locks than I thought these doors had. Paste skits out. After a moment, the door squeaks open. Jeffrey! A bespectacled boy is standing in the doorway. He's looking at me very intently through his extremely thick glasses. Who is it? Blind? No, at least not completely. Why would he have eyeglasses if he was? He leans closer to me until our noses are almost touching. His breath stinks of garlic. Hisao Nakai. I'm moving into the next room. I thought I should introduce my... His face suddenly brightens in realization, and he stands back upright, thrusting his hand out in a smiling greeting, almost straight into my diaphragm. Oh, stop, dude! The name's Kenji! Uh, hi. I take Kenji's sweaty hand and shake it, still a little rattled by the sudden change of attitude and his vehement welcome. There were some suspicious-looking people going in and out of your room earlier. It was probably my parents. Sigma Potter? <laughs> Your parents? You sure? Because they look like they could have been some other people too. You can't judge a book by its cover. Is that a place proverb is left hanging between us awkwardly as I try to think of some way to respond? I'd say the chances are high enough. He shudders and makes some exaggerated hand gestures. You're a brave man, he sow. Me, I don't think I could trust the chances. The only one I trust is myself. Does that mean I shouldn't get to know you either? He thinks about this for a second. A wise decision. <laughs> Damn, you are smarter than you look. Probably. What do you look like? I hope I'm not... Oh. What do you look like? I hope not smart. He squints his eyes and leans closer again, but I lean backwards to dodge it. 
Never mind. It doesn't matter. Bro wants a kiss. What the hell? Back the fuck up. With that, he turns, fumbles... Fumbles around for a moment and starts search the door handle and shuts the door behind him. I slide the key into the lock of the door marked 119. Your personal space, bro. Bleak beige walls, white linen, a desk made of some type of light wood, ugly curtains. It's no one's room. Impersonal. Like my hospital room was. My bags are sitting at the foot of my bed, looking a lot emptier than they did this morning. Closet is sitting open, stocked with my clothes. Also, it seems that there are a number of school uniforms hanging in there as well. I notice pinned to the sleeve of one of the shirts. Yes, I'll make it yours, dumb MC. Exactly. Hi, Hee-chan. You've unpacked your things and made your bed. They said if these don't fit, then you should go to the office tomorrow. If you have any problems, you can always call us. Love, Mom and Dad. Well, at least I don't have to worry about unpacking. I kind of hoped I would have. Then there would be something to do. It's still too early. I put the note down on the desktop and lie down on the bed, feeling drained. Lying there makes me want to read something, but I have nothing with me. I wonder if the hospital conditioned me for wanting to read whenever I have nothing to do. The restless urge just keeps growing until I have to stand up. Maybe it's stress or something. I was pretty nervous about it before coming, and for the entire day today too. I still am, I think. Damn. I have to distract myself somehow so I won't be this unnatural all the time. Tomorrow, I'll go book borrow some books from the library. Yeah, I'll do that. But for now... Overdose! <laughs> the bottles of medication are neatly arranged on my night... Oh, the bottles of med... Take your meds! The bottles of medication... Bottles... Oh, fuck. The bottles of medications neatly arranged on my night table catch my eye. I pick up one and shake it just to hear the contents rattle inside. And then read the glued-on pharmacy label. Isao Nakai. Two tablets daily to stay alive. It doesn't really say that, but it could just as well. It's kind of twisted, having your life depend on chemicals like this. I resent it a little, but what choice do I have? With a sigh, I begin my new daily ritual of taking the right number of pills from each bottle. Being careful to check the correct dosages. Hmm. I lie down again. Feeling hollow and uncertain. And after that, I keep staring at the blank, unfamiliar ceiling for a long time. It doesn't start looking any more familiar. Not even after darkness falls and long shadows draw across my room like fingers. The sheets feel slightly more comfortable. Warm and nest-like against the chill that passes for room temperature here. Soon, the lighter shade of darkness that is the ceiling looks like every ceiling looks like every ceiling does at night, and it becomes the only thing I recognize anymore. The night beckons me to sleep, and I feel the coldness of unfamiliarity and fear creeping up my spine once again. I keep drifting further away from the world I knew. English hard. Jeez, what a downer. He's a little, he's a little bit sad. A little bit of a sad boy. Lupus Albus, thank you. Women, women could be here. Kenji thought as the doctor prepped course through this thick veins. What? Very noise, thank you. His disability is wearing scarves indoors. QB, thank you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I present you male Pippa. Trey man, thank you. Steal Misha's gun is your property. You paid for it. Never forget. Kenji is always right. That handsome devil. Kong Leo, thank you. I miss Pippa. Hold on, thank you. Or that one. Idaho the Tricky, thank you. I remember this game. I call it Cripple Fucker Simulator 2012 Edition. Kong Liu, thank you. Come big, big, big. Zara, thank you. Burn Girl looks smoking hot. 
Algie, thank you. Yo, Pip, can we get a birthday shout out for my coworker Chris? Stay cringe, homie. Happy birthday, Chris! Happy, happy birthday! Uh, so yes, thank you. He's a good Chad, though. Uh, King Bushka, thank you. Yonosuke Mihara, thank you. I prefer my waifus. Well done. Jesus Christ. Romaniac bro, thank you. Um, damn, I wasn't expecting to feel all guilty. giddy. Watching this after such a long time, it's like seeing an old cartoon you always watch as a kid. Oh, we had to click! Over an hour, how's your throat? Pretty good. I have like this weird, uncomfortable feeling in my head. Maybe I'm dying of brain cancer. I don't know. Let's get doing out, bros. Yeah. Anyways. Pippa discovers clicking. <laughs> Be sure to save time to time. Oh, that's probably a good idea. We haven't really gotten any... Oh, that art was so cute! When did the deformed hottie show up? Oh my god. It's the lead. I get that sometimes too. It's weird, isn't it? It's like, it's like, for me, it's like just above... I don't know how to put it. Like above my left... On the left side of my head. Just at like the start of my hairline. Hmm. Hmm. I wake up in a strange room. Solid morning light shimmers against the light gray ceiling. I'd forgotten to draw the curtains closed last night. I... This is my room, isn't it? My room? This is the third room this year that I'm supposed to call mine. Various things around here remind me that indeed it's me who is supposed to be the one living here. Probably a stress twitch or jaw issue, maybe. Maybe. I've been anxious today, so maybe it's... maybe it's... like a stress thing. My bags on the floor, my new school books on the desk, my numerous medications on the night table. I stare at the bottles for a moment, deliberating, until I open a bottle, shake out a pill, and pop out a tablet from a foil sheet. I down them with a chaser of water without thinking about the chemistry. My uniforms are in the closet. I slink out from under the sheets and stretch my back before dressing up. Migraine aura? Any nausea? Any visual changes? No. No, just discomfort. Kenji is literally Sawa. True. Putting on a new school uniform feels like dressing in someone else's clothes. The artificial smell of generic detergent invades my nose. But the fresh feeling... The feeling of fresh cloth against my back is a good, natural one. It feels like a school uniform should. It's not much different from what I used to wear before. That goes for other things, too. So far, this place seems more or less like a normal school. Except for the people. I think back to my talk with Kenji yesterday. Misha's constant laughter, and she's in a sweeping sign language gestures. We've only met three students so far. Maybe they aren't that normal, but I'm sure the others are. Or perhaps people like them are what passes for normal around here. Yeah, what does pass for normal around here? What do people do? I don't see a lot of kids hanging around after classes yesterday, so... Maybe there are clubs? If so, I wonder if I should join one. All through class, the questions remain... The question remains on my mind. So I decide to ask Shizune about it when we split into groups. Games where you get to, like, pick your club are so based. After that, all she did... After all, she did say if I had anything I wanted to know, I should ask her. <laughs> she crosses her arms and shifts her gaze slowly to Misha, who looks more preoccupied with trying to grind the eraser of her pencil down so that the top is perfect and evenly flat. What's up with her face? What's up with her face? <laughs> she's so... she's so expressive. She's so like cool and calm collected, but then she gets like so insanely expressive. It's very, it's very moy. Very moy. <laughs> so 
sorry, sorry, Shichan. Is there something you wanted from me? Oh, I see. Hmm, that's a good question, Hichan. My first thought is that means she doesn't know, which is worrying. Maybe I'm being too negative. Well, anyway, Isha, please don't prove me right. Oh, that's right! Everyone is encouraged to join the club! A lot of people do so, but there isn't really anything else to do. There are also school events, like the festival coming up in a few days! Almost every student in the school tends to help out with it, doing whatever. So, you actually transferred in at a busy time! Maybe you can help out too! Sure. What's the festival about? Misha freezes. <laughs> I don't know, Hitam. The truth is... It's a local event, and I'm not from this area, so... She starts signing desperately to Shizune, asking her to bail her out. Shizune adjusts her glasses at the end of an oddly grandiose flourish and starts signing hard and heavy. Huh? Oh! Who cares? Misha puffs out her chest as she shouts Shizune's words at me with a disproportionate amount of pride. Too loud. I can see heads turning to look in our direction. Not so loud. Human beings evolve with each new generation! The ideals and beliefs behind a festival will inevitably change with time! Now, it's about delicious fried food and amusing little games as you play to win prizes! <laughs> the teacher clears his throat very loudly, batting his long wooden pointer against his other palm like a baton. He shoots a pointed gaze at us. Finally noticing where we are, Nisha stifles a yelp and quickly quiets down. She's nay doesn't seem embarrassed at all, though brushing it off without a care. in the middle of class, and should start working. I think it was something to write with? It could. That's right, Chi-chan! What? That's right! Chi-chan, are you asking because you're interested in joining a club? Look at her face! Look at her face! She's so cute, Chat. She's so cute! It could have been my eyes playing tricks on me, but I think I saw a suspicious glance exchanged between them. Misha's tone has also changed, although it does that every other word anyway. Yeah, I was thinking about it. Eh. Scooting in my chair. Misha and she's an A look at each other again. I'm about to ask what they have in mind when something dark flutters in my peripheral vision, catching my attention. Out of the corner of my eye, I saw the girl with long, dark hair get up from her desk and slip silently towards the door. It doesn't seem like she was working in any group, and no one seemed to notice her but me. I glance at the teacher, who's also looking at the dark-haired girl go. Why doesn't he say anything? Pizza? Is something wrong? Do I look as uneasy as I feel? Or was Misha just looking at me? Looking after the girl who left. No? Nothing? <laughs> Cute. Okay, well, like we were asking, you don't have any plans for lunch today, do you? I thought I would go to the library and pick up some books. Oh, not really. Do you want to have lunch together then? Sure. A ghost? No, he was just, he was thinking it in his head, but he didn't actually say it. Like, he was, like, planning on saying it, but... Yeah! <laughs> okay, Hitam! Perfect! The 
rest of class passes on eventually. The girl with the long hair never came back. Before I have the time to put any more thought into where she could have gone, the teacher informs us that it's time to stop working. Shizune looks more than a little annoyed that we only just barely managed to finish all our work on time. I'm just glad we finished it at all. It's not a contest or anything. She's pissed. Yes, it is, Hitan! Impossible. Really? Really. I've noticed this before, but it's kind of funny how Misha is always moving her hands and signing not only everything she says, but what anyone else is saying at any given time. Obviously, it must be so she's and I can understand it. Her eyes dart back and forth between Misha's hands and me. I don't know who I'm supposed to be looking at, so I'm talking to Misha, but that might be wrong. Maybe I should face Shizune. I'm used to looking in the direction of the person whose voice I'm hearing, but really. Shizune can't hear me. But would it be disrespectful to talk to her only through Misha? Then again, isn't that what she's doing? No, she's at least looking at me. This is all very confusing and will take some time to get used to. It's not a contest because contests are competitions over a prize. If there's no prize on the line, it's not really a contest. <laughs> She's May's eyes flash dangerously with a competitive glare. She stares at me, as if surprised that I'm challenging her. I think maybe this is a contest to her. I never noticed before how dark and blue her eyes are. It's truly an alluring gaze. Sure, Hitan. Very sure. Wah. Wah. Dark and blue like an endless lake. True green be Why are you guys talking about green beans? Ha <laughs> ha You're wrong, Hitan. Because I don't want to be the slowest one in the class. Therefore, what's on the line is my confidence in my abilities. And the prize is the satisfaction of proving them. <laughs> She's Nay pushes her glasses up the bridge of her nose in a very matter of fact way. I'd argue more, but the bell rings and she quickly gets up and picks up her bag, looking at me expectantly. I'd almost forgotten that I was supposed to have lunch with them. Where do you want to eat? The cafeteria? Ha ha ha! That's so plain! Okay, let's go! Plain? Well, I guess. At my old school, I like to eat outside near the back of the building. It was a good spot, but I didn't find it until near the end of my freshman year. I wonder if there's a similar place to eat here. Misha seems to apply as much. Shizne and Misha pull me towards the cafeteria, which is surprisingly not packed. Maybe some students favor, eater favor eating in classrooms or outdoors. I saw some of my classmates had box lunches. After we finish eating, Misha picks up where we left off earlier. Oh, Hitan, you wanted to know about clubs and stuff, right? Right? Right, Hitan. Okay, I guess it makes sense to ask first. Yeah, I've only met three of the characters so far. Three of the girls. So it's hard to pick a favorite. Exchanging little nods of confirmation, they turn to face me again, and Misha straightens her posture as if she's about to deliver a speech. Hitan, do you have anything you're really interested in? I used to play soccer, but I'm not really into it. I don't follow the teams and players or anything like that. As of late, I usually just read a lot. Hmm... There is a book club, right, Chicha? Right! But it seems like they have all the members they can possibly have right now. Sorry, Hitan. It's a really popular club. Hitan, does that mean you don't have anything already in mind? Not really. I joined the literature club for more special girls. <laughs> Got it! Great! The 
That's great, Eitan! Really great! <laughs> Why is that so great? No reason! Well, Eitan, other than clubs and the upcoming festival, there is one other thing! Student Council! I see. I didn't know the school had a student council. That was a very melodramatic setup, though, just to tell me that. I'm pretty sure the two of them know this, because Shizune looks a little embarrassed about it, and Misha is laughing. Shizune quickly retakes control of the discussion. In a matter of speaking, after all, it's still Misha who has to voice whatever she says. Evil woman. Fucking Chloe's. Right, right. Ethan, maybe you should join the student council. They could use more people. Yes, definitely. You should definitely join. Why? Don't stare at me like that. Well, for one, we could hang out every day, Ethan. Ethan and I are both in the student council. Actually, Ethan is the president. I'm starting to get the suspicion that Chizne and Misha might not exactly be the most unbiased people to talk about this with. As if reading my mind, Chizne quickly adjusts her glasses and signs something to Misha. Ha <laughs> ha Of course we're not trying to get you to join just because we would obviously benefit from you joining the student council and therefore have an incentive to try and get you to... <sighs> so, you're admitting that? Nice if you joined and we'd appreciate it. But even with all without all that, joining the student council shows a healthy interest in the workings of one school. Yup, it's true, Hitan. Besides, don't you want to spend time with us after school, Hitan? I can't tell if she's being genuine or if this is just really good acting. Both of them seem to be trying hard to look their cutest. Although they are already pretty cute to begin with. Well... She's volume control on her glass. What? <laughs> so it's settled then! Welcome to the student council, Heaton! What? No! No! Oh, See, Shee-chan! Of course it wouldn't go so easily! You've been drafted! Oh no. <laughs> yep, that's right though. It would be boring if it went that smoothly. Oh wow, she tells me candy now. You were betting on it? Hey, my life is not a game here. She's nay seems very intrigued by this when Misha signs it to her. The aggressive glint returns to her eyes. <laughs> that's interesting, Eton! Let's play a game! That's not what I said! About rich man, poor man, Eton. If you lose, you have to join the student council. No, absolutely not. Oh, why not? Well, because you two both have the same incentive and therefore the same goal, which is to get me to join the student council, right? This is bullshit. They're con artists. These women, they are liars. Yep. Yeah, that isn't my goal. But what this means is that if both of you can team up, I'll be at a clear disadvantage. So, I'll have to decline. Well, their woman, if she breathes, she's a thought. Eitan, I'm a very offended! Are you saying you don't trust us and that we would pull something so... D ...disingenuous? That makes me sad. Sorry? It's hard to tell where Shizne's influence and Misha's thoughts begin. No, Shizne's influence ends and Misha's thoughts begin. ESO, shut up! Shut up! In order 
order to atone for hurting a young girl's feelings, you should definitely join the student council! No! How about a game of paper football instead of rich man, poor man? Paper football? Yeah! It's a game they play in America! You make a paper triangle and then you try to shoot it past goalposts that the other player makes with their fingers! Isn't it cool? It's the ultimate form of competition between two people, he jump. And it's also played by elementary and middle school children, she <laughs> That means it's a game that really separates the boys from the men. More like the boys from the slightly older boys. Anyway, I'm not going to play that either. Just the fact that you know about it means you're probably surprisingly good about it. At it, shit, fuck, whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. How did you know, Ita? Shizune frowns at Misha. Telling me that she probably wasn't supposed to admit that so readily. I wouldn't say that I'm happy with their attempts to get me into the student council, but I'm a little curious about what the student council does here. I've never been on one before. Or even know anybody who was a member. So it interests me. I also kind of like Shizne and Misha, so maybe it wouldn't be so bad. Okay, Hitan. How about Risk? The game of world domination! I don't know what that is. It's really fun, Hitan! You fight for control of the world with armies and everything! Sounds like Shizune would be good at it. If you want to play, we can after school! Oh, really, Shichan? We can play just for fun, Hee-chan! Shichan hasn't played in a long time! So if you want to, there are no strings attached! Well... Okay. Hasbro now owns our souls! <laughs> okay! Okay, okay! Perfect! We'll see you after school in the student council room, then, he done. Wait, why there? <gasps> this con artist! Because... that's where we keep the game! <laughs> I grimace to tell them how much I do not like this, but it's more for show than anything. So in the end, I agree. But only after getting Shizune to acknowledge that I don't mean anything concrete just by accepting to take a look around and play a game with her. Lunch ends and we go back to class. Just say yes, but we haven't even ah jump scare. We even had the op haven't even had the option to. We're walking into a trap. We're walking into a trap. Great face, thank you. Oh 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 god. <laughs> they definitely have good taste in board games. During afternoon classes, the long-haired girl comes back and sits down in her seat without a word. Again, no one seems to notice. Or if they do, no one says anything. I want to ask Misha about it, but I don't want to be nosy. After school, she's Nay and Misha quickly find me by the first floor lobby and latch onto me, covering each flank in case I might try to escape. I feel a little offended, but I had been considering it. Nevertheless, I'm a bit disturbed that enough people have made a break for it in the past that they're on their guard. What's with the escort? This doesn't make me feel very comfortable. In fact, it makes me feel like a dangerous prisoner being transported into a cell. <laughs> What's wrong, Hitan? She's so smug. That's right. We're just going to play a game of Risk, remember? I don't know, Misha. This all seems a little sinister to me. I start thinking that when we sit down to play the game, they'll tie me down and torture me until I agree to join the student council. Well, that's highly unlikely, but still. For some reason, it just seems like it would be so plausible. Oh. Getting to the student council room is as simple as turning two corners from where we started. What? That's it? This makes you guys being so on top of me seem a little silly. That's not true, Hitan. Hitan says that when their life is threatened, people have shown the capability to pull off superhuman bursts of speed. 
need. Life is threatened. Her expression unchanging, Misha signs something amusedly to Shizune, who makes a baffling face and puts her hands behind her back, looking pleased with herself. <laughs> Misha feigns deafness and hums cheerily. Stop that. I know you heard me. You have no excuse, unlike Shizune. Shizune opens the door to the student council room. It's a very plain, sparsely decorated room. Although it is quite large, maybe even a little larger than a classroom. There's a big table in the center, surrounded by chairs, and a smaller desk prominently placed in the back that I assume is Shizune's. There are a few regular desks and chairs stacked to one side as well. Extras, perhaps? Aside from the tables and chairs, the room doesn't have much else to offer. Just a couple of filing cabinets and bookshelves stacked with old records and documents. Not much else. In fact, nothing else. This is a pretty bleak room. You could at least put a potted plant in here or something. But the most noticeable thing is that this room doesn't have other people. Psst. Are we early? This is where they hold their trials, yes, so over. No! What do you mean, no? Does it mean nobody else is coming today? Yeah, that's right. Ah. What the hell was that? Before I manage to ask why that's the case, Shizne claps her hands together very energetically. Hey, Tan, let's play Risk. Come on, you promised, didn't you? You have to. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Do you want to know the rules? We can explain to you while we set everything up. While Misha is talking, Shizune takes out what looks like a board game from behind one of the filing cabinets and throws it onto the table. Actually, this looks kind of interesting. After Misha spends a little too long for her liking running through the basics with a somewhat vague and confusing tutorial, Shizune cuts in and declares the game has started with a decisive motion, slicing her arm through the air. Shizune's aggressiveness is rubbing off onto me. I start feeling more competitive than I intended to be when I agreed to this. Yeah, on planet, thank you. Halfway into the game, while I try to ponder how to defend against Shizune's assault from two fronts, she breaks my concentration by drumming her fingers on the table to get my attention. Ichan! Ichan wants you to know that you are taking too long to make a move! Shishen also says that she will let you keep Australia if you agree to join the student council! I thought this was a game with no string attached. Just the fact that she would dangle that over my head as an offer means that she knows I care about the outcome of this game. And anyway, no! Shishen admires your fighting spirit and would be a benevolent dictator who will spend your people if you agree to join the student council! <laughs> You're so competitive, she's me. She seems to take this as a compliment. I would expect the student council president to be a little bit more magnanimous. Magnanimous? She doesn't seem to know what the word means or how it's signed, so she pulls out a piece of paper and writes it for Shizune, who in return signs it back to Misha. Misha presses her index finger against her temples as if trying to physically imprint the word into her memory. Suddenly, Shizune bursts into a flurry of gestures. Misha looks daunted by the pace of her heated signing. Uh, wait! Please slow down, Shichan! Um, Shichan? Uh, Shichan says you're going to lose! Tell her I would... <laughs> Tell her I will crush her world empire with my rebellion! Uh, okay. <laughs> Those eyes of hers shine with childlike mischief. She's cute! Oh, okay. We have another choice. I'm gonna catch up on some super chats real quick. I should have... Stayed at the bottom of the list from where I last... Red. But instead, I... <laughs> kept scrolling to the top. Let's see here. I think we read these ones. There we go. 
Uh, Nocturnal, thank you. This game is pretty legit. Would recommend it to anyone. KMS, thank you. Never played or heard of this game. Please be gentle, Pippa. Anti-annihilator, thank you. What's with all these stairs in the background? Very ableist. Sumi Shiro, thank you. Emmy is best girl, and I will die on this hill. Great face, thank you. Not dating teachers is a good thing, Pippa. It's fiction. Who cares? Hey, mom, thank you. Support Pippa, or else you'll be eaten alive. Zara, thank you. Weren't you able to date a teacher in class of 09? Uh, kind of. Inka Zombie, thank you. Is this your alma mater? Yubei, thank you. Hey, Pippa, this is the... Is this the famous Sad Girls Company dating visual novel I keep hearing about? Like Mage, thank you. Is Pippa in this game? Yeah, I'm right there. Uh, Bing X, thank you. Nobody laughed. Don't even think of doing it. Cat, thank you. We're his best girl. The memories of this, though. Bib, thank you. Pippa, if you're going to give us the proper kind of a shoujo experience, you need to use sign language for when she's in a talk. I can't move my arms! I'm a PNG! What do you mean? This is nice, thank you. Why need... See if... Death... How is Babby formed? you be... Cube, thank you. No curtains. Snipers could get ya. WD, thank you. Uh, give me the chocolate hisao. Yes, thank you. Uh, the true one hand clapping. Can Ash Corp, thank you. Everyone let Pippa know Misha's disability is... The face with eyes, like, rolling. Micro Noise, thank you. She's from the Leaf Village. Sonari, thank you. Can't hear shit. Let me put on my glasses. From in here, bro. Thank you. Damn bros. Damn man, I wasn't expecting to feel giddy after watching this a long time. It's like, I read the one. Yo, Nosuke Mihara, thank you. I prefer my wife who's well done. King Bushka, thank you. CS, thank you. He's a Gigi Chad though. Algie, thank you. Yo, Pippa, can we get a birthday shout out for my coworker Crit? I think I read that one, right? Did I read that one? Happy birthday, Chris! Happy, happy birthday! Yeah, thank you. Burn Girl looks smoking hot. Tang Liu, thank you. I'd go the tricky, thank you. Uh, ah, I remember this game. I read that one as well. Tang Liu, thank you. I miss Pippa! You read these? Yeah. Let's see. Sven, thank you. You need the harem ending to get the whole woman. EJ, thank you. Please enjoy the super chat. Yeah, but today I got one of our senior directors at work to ask a group of students to explain hentai. I may need a new job. Ooh. Let's read from the top. Okay. Uh, it's Ed, thank you. Why Australia? I thought it didn't exist. It doesn't. She's bargaining with, with chips that are imaginary. She's a liar. She's a lying woman and she's trying to deceive you. There's no such thing as Australia. Do not be fooled. Any VTuber that's like, I'm from Australia. Actually, they're a fucking liar. That place doesn't exist. It's called Austria. It's in Europe. Look it up. Shadow G, thank you. Kim S, thank you. There might be risk involved, Pippa. William Fontaine, thank you. Uh, Becker Noise, thank you. Is there enough room at this school for a rabbit? So Bay is a liar. Anyone who says they're from Australia, lying. Not a real place. It's made up. One day somebody typoed and they added like an L in when they were typing Austria and they fucked it up and now everybody's just too self-conscious to fix it. It's so over. It's so over. Australian bros, I'm on to you. I know your lie. I know your secret. I want to buzz you. So Pippa is Pippa's disability ESL. Yes. <laughs> I hey you Antichrist hater, thank you. Uh, thanks for helping my workday go by, filled with nostalgia. You're the only VTuber I watch. Thank you. I hate the Antichrist. Hell yeah, brother. Keep hating the Antichrist. Okay. William Fontaine. De la toi de boudoir. Thank you all for the super chat. Koalas are German. Yeah. Yes. There's no such thing as Australia. Anyways. Just a point. Attack aggressively. It's trap. It's smarter to play defensively here. Hmm. Australia is an old name for Antarctica. Aggression. Let's fight hard. Fight long and hard, my troops. Nick the Dick, thank you. Hitman is very quiet right now. She's either really mocking me or trying to trick me. I have nothing else to lose, though, so I might as well try something different. Maybe if I spread out my forces and try to control more territories, I can recruit the advantage. Shizne seems to focus on conquering whole nations, so maybe I can sacrifice my hold on continents to gain more small countries. It's worth a shot. A few turns later, I end up losing the game anyway. This smug bitch! Shizne adjusts her glasses victoriously and allows herself to tentatively pump a fist in the air in celebration. This is bullshit. This is bullshit! Bullshit! 
All right, we have to change our strategy to aggressive tactics IRL. Push her over and spit on her. I win! I win! Yay! There's no need to translate that. It was pretty clear. <laughs> Don't look so sad, Ethan. You were really giving it your best. That's what I thought. Sometimes your best isn't good enough, though. If anyone knows that, it's me. You did very well for someone who just learned how to play today. Hmm. Hey, son! You attacked Iceland and North America at the same time. That's a very daring move. She town is impressed. Yeah, but did it work out? That's what matters. The mark of great people is that they are daring and that they can follow through. You're already halfway there. Isn't that great, Hitan? That isn't enough, though. Just potential isn't enough. There is no point to potential if you don't take the first step. And there is no point to that if you don't keep going. I want to see more. You're right, Chi-chan. But that's so demanding. You're daring to score some babes. That's what I'm saying, Buncho! Hey! Sorry. Hmm. She's... She's an Aileen's forward. Suddenly looking a lot less playful. And more like the serious person I expected her to be from the start. Chi-chan. Would you like to join the student council? She really doesn't waste any time, does she? But... It's only my second day of school, so I'm hesitant about committing to something so early. I haven't even taken a look at any other clubs yet. But spending time with Shizne and Misha doesn't seem like something I would hate. I still need more time to think about it before I decide, for sure. Maybe I'll get back to you on it. Okay, Ethan. But I hope you're not saying that so we don't feel bad. No, really. Really? Ethan, if you're gonna say that, you're... You're saying that is definitely the truth. And there can't be any mistaking it. I know, I know. I guess I should have my revenge for losing, at the very least. She's nice smiles at that in a mischievous way that feels like twisting the knife in the wound of my loss. Her face! I take a glance at the clock on the wall and realize I spent far longer playing Risk than I expected. Sorry, I think I have to go. I wanted to go to the library. It's not closed yet, is it? She's nice scratches her head and gestures at Misha. How hard can it be to determine whether the library's open? There's a clock right there on the wall. It should be, unless the librarian is a... Uh... It should be, unless the librarian is absent. I think you're right, Chitan. Here's a chance. Shut up! We think the library is open. It's on the second floor. Can't miss it. You want us to show it? Show you where it is? No thanks. It's okay. See you tomorrow. You think you just like going on a walk? Bye bye. Ah, what's with these creepy paintings? One flight of the stairs up, and I run into problems. The second floor hallway is a carbon copy of the third floor one. Wide, of course, and plain, like only hallways can be. The problem is that the library's whereabouts are not as easily determined as one would think. The classrooms are marked with signs stating which class they belong to, but then there's a plethora of other unmarked rooms. Is the library one of them? Or is it just somewhere down the hallway? I bet on the ladder and choose my direction at random. After I turn around the corner, an unmarked door draws my attention because it's not closed. It's not open either though. Just barely ajar so that I can see it's open and nothing else. It would make sense for the library door to be invitingly open. And while this one is not quite that, it's good enough. At the very least, it means that someone is inside and I can ask for directions, no matter how embarrassing that is. I gingerly push on the center of the door with my fingertips. Every muscle in my arm ready to pull back at a moment's notice. The feeling of being an outsider to the school can't be shaken from my mind. 
So much so that I instinctively fear doing something wrong by entering. The door slowly creaks as if groaning from a deep sleep. Though is much easier to open than I'd anticipated. Leaning over and poking my head even further inside to gain sight of the room as fast as possible. The meek, hello? on my lips is quickly snatched away. BLOND! Hmm. This is... not as I was expecting. I mindlessly let the door open to its full extent, taking in the sight of the solitary figure taking center stage in the otherwise abandoned room. The situation steals my voice, leaving me standing at the doorway staring at the beautiful girl. Evidently having taken her time to assess the situation, the girl gently puts down her teacup and opens her eyes, but she doesn't look at me. Hmm. Yo, is that Saber? Maybe. Hmm. Hello there. May I help you? Staring directly in front of herself, the moments of her lip, uh, the movements of her lips seem to break the silence rather than the words. However, it's the soft, measured voice that reminds me she's a being separate from the room itself. Not only is she likely the tallest girl I've ever laid eyes on, but even among the foreigners I've met, she's strikingly distinct. Uh, hi. Sorry for intruding. I was just kind of lost. She takes a moment to formulate a response before speaking. Every action she takes feels as if it's carefully choreographed beforehand. Care to take a seat? Unexpected, considering that I'm intruding upon her. Um, thanks. I slowly step towards another seat opposite her, the girl resting the teacup and saucer on the wooden table in between. The way she doesn't track my movements with her head is telling. That and the slight cloudiness to her eyes means she must be at least partially blind like Kenji. Come to think of it, her voice doesn't have any detectable accent either. I guess she must be half Japanese. As I take my seat, her composure takes me slightly off guard. Her air of relaxed confidence makes the silence entirely comfortable. The calming atmosphere is so very different from the student council office. I take it you're a new student to Yamaku. Uh, yeah, I just transferred in yesterday. I get the distinct feeling my speech patterns don't match the formality of hers, accentuated by her restrained bow of greeting. One which I hasten to match, before realizing the futility of the action. I'm Lily Sato. Pleased to meet you. Isao. Isao Nakai. She gives a nod before gesturing roughly in the direction of her teacup. Would you... Care for a drink? Sure. As much as it pains me, I can't keep step with her formality in the proceedings. She gives a kind nod, taking the request in stride. Without another word, she steps off the chair and prepares a second cup of tea from a collection of supplies laid out along a shelf. A brush here, a brush there. Her left hand often lightly touching the side of whichever container she's pouring into. It seems to be a process she's followed dozens of times before. As I lean sideways to see around her back, she seems to use her long, dainty fingers to measure the right amount of water in the cup. It's one thing to see different disabilities the students in my class have, but it's quite another to see how everyone seems to adapt. Shizune and Misha have no problem working together to communicate to me, and Lily herself seems to have workarounds for her problems that I'd never thought of. While I feel slightly guilty about her doing the work, she seems pleased to be following the correct process of the offerer preparing the drink. So... Her soft voice brings me out of my silent observance. Which room were you looking for? It's not often this classroom is visited after school. The school library. Shizne and me- I mean some classmates told me it was on this floor. 
She finishes pouring water into the teacup and she nods, a small metallic tapping coming from the teacup indicating it being stirred. I am aware of Miss Hakamichi, as are most students. To be with them means you're in class 3-3, no? That's right, in the science room with Muto. She gives a small giggle before setting down the teaspoon and slowly walking towards the table, teacup and saucer in hand. He's quite... he's quite a character. I imagine you'll come to like him. Most do. Yeah. As she sets down the tea, I gently take it and have a sip. I'm really more of a coffee person, but this seems like a rather bad moment to bring it up. Nonetheless, the smell's quite nice. I hardly think it'd be hard to choke down. Thanks, Sato. It tastes really nice. She smiles and quickly waves her hand in front of her face. Lily, please. There's no need to be too formal. She says this in spite of her exceedingly well-bred speech. Oh well. I guess I should try and ask her about herself, as it really does seem as if she's catering to me. Give her a reason to live! What the hell?! <laughs> what the hell, Jet? So, which class are you from? I imagine it's one of the third year classes. Correct. I'm in class 3-2, which is on the third floor, same as yours. It's taught by Miyagi, and is specifically for both blind and partially blind students. I see. Uh, I mean, uh, s sorry. I feel like slapping myself for the faux pas. Looking at her face, though, she doesn't seem to be the least bit off-put by it. You fucking dumbass! I see! Oh shit! Sorry, I mean, I don't see! That is to say, because you are blind, I relate to you in that I did not see what was... Fucking dumbass. You're real smooth, buddy. Real smooth, buddy! <laughs> I can't hit that button! My, my. There's no need to change your speech on my account. Uh, sure. Sorry. I guess I'm really showing my newness here. You can't say that to the- I'm sorry! An environment like this would be a big change, so I can't fault you for it. While the same can't be said for everyone, many have come to terms with their conditions. A category which in would include her, it seems. All too ready to jump ship from this particular topic, I segue into another. Do you come here to drink tea often? It's a really nice place. Thinking on it, this might be her version of the place behind my school that I like to have lunch at. I come here fairly often during lunch times. My duties as class representative don't leave enough time for an official club. So a friend and I use this room for having tea. Class representative, huh? Compared to Shizne, her manners mannerisms seem to be almost completely opposite. While Shizne is blunt and fiercely driven, Lily seems relaxed and calm, almost aloof. Come to think of it, she might be useful for a less biased view of the school's clubs. What kinds of clubs are there to join? Hmm. The more popular ones are the track and field club, which uses the field near the school during lunch times, the baseball club, and the book club in a room near the library. There are also numerous small ones too, such as the art and music clubs. At a time when I'm just wanting to get on my feet, rushing into a club right away seems slightly unappealing. I wonder if this school shares the same rule as my old one. Is it compulsory to join a club? It isn't, though it is encouraged. Ah, good, that's a relief. How does she tie her bow? I'm sure it's just habit. It might be, it might be she just ties her hair normally with a hair tie, and then this is like a secondary hair tie. It's just for aesthetics, or like it clips on. Hmm. I really let my guard... I really let my... Fuck! I really let down my guard around this girl to let such a thing slip out. 
The fact seems to slightly amuse her. Not wanting my tea to get cold, I finally start drinking it as Lily does the same. Cozy. As I look over to the window over her shoulder, I notice the light coming into the room has a distinctly orange tint. Even here, time doesn't stand still. Huh. But the time's gone quickly. Sorry? Right, she's blind. Of course she can't see the sun setting. It just looks like the sun's starting to set. It seems to come as a surprise for her. I guess she must have lost track of the time. Sorry, Hisao. I didn't mean to keep you from the library for so long. I quickly moved to allay her concern. LA. Fuck. Oh, no, it's okay. The library's still open, isn't it? She pauses and takes a moment to think on it. It's probably something I should have asked Shizune when I had the chance, but Lily seems likely to know in any case. True. It's open until 6.30 during the weekdays. A quick glance at my watch confirms I have well enough time to get there. Hmm. I might get going in that case. It's been nice talking with you, Lily. Medium loud. The audio balancing! She smiled. She smiles and gives a deep nod, her hand still neatly folded on the table in front of her. It was my pleasure. Oh, come to think of it. Shall I show you to where the library is? I couldn't possibly ask for more help. I should be able to find it all right. Well, unless my navigational skills fail me. Which they seem to have a habit of doing. It's all right. I was going to be talking to the librarian there in any case. I could introduce you. This gets better and better. It's pretty hard to deny her offer. If you're sure, then that'd be great. Thanks. Save me, half-white girl. What the fuck? <laughs> Thank you, mildly OCD. As she stands up to follow me, she takes hold of a straight, retractable cane that had been slipped in the handle of her bag on the floor. Compared to the cane the boy in the class had, Lily's looks much thinner and longer. His must be support for support, whereas Lily's is for navigation. Together, we leave the peaceful room and enter the empty hallway on the way to the library. Side by side, my pace carefully slowed to match hers. We slowly walk through the hallway. It doesn't take long for us to arrive at the door to the warm-looking room, apparently situated in the center of the floor, rather than either wing. <laughs> Ladies first! She gives an appreciative smile at the gesture, taking the lead as we file in. To the left is the wooden library counter, with the library proper being on the right. It easily dwarfs my old school's library, with the distinct smell of old books giving the place an almost old-world air. There don't seem to be a lot of students here, considering the time. It isn't a big surprise. Everyone's probably either in the school grounds or the dorms. Yuko, are you here? She says it to the thin air since the librarian doesn't seem to be present, and of course Lily can't see this. What's unexpected is that it draws a reaction. Something from under the counter thuds against it, followed by a quiet wail. <coughs> the origin, apparently the librarian, quickly crawls out and bounces up to extremely rigid attention. Her voice is strained in a failing attempt to sound casual, and she's rubbing the back of her head. Good afternoon. What happened just now? I heard a strange sound. It's nothing. I just hit my head. See, I dropped an eraser under my desk, and while I was looking for it, a pencil dropped, and when I was looking for both of them, you came and surprised me.
Are you all right? I'm sorry. I couldn't know. It's okay. It's okay. Sorry for making you worry. This is nothing. I've had worse happen to me. She's quick to reverse Lily's apologies, almost frantically trying to push aside the possibility that she could be in any way inconvenienced by bashing her head on the counter. Yeah, worse things have happened. <laughs> the girl fidgets with her fingers as Lily doesn't seem to drop her concerned expression. And then she shuffles some papers around the counter for no reason. A little shorter than Lily, fleek with glasses, freckles, and a very troubled look. She seems to fit a library perfectly. Did you get my message? Message? Hmm... Oh, the two imported books that arrived. Right! They finally came! I can't believe it took so long, but... Amidst her celebrations, partially from managing to change the topic, I'm sure, she notices me from the corner of her eye and freezes on the spot when she does. Oh no! I'm sorry for not noticing you before! Do you need to check out a book? Or return one? I'm sorry, I'm sorry! The way she can so quickly shift between moods is a little unsettling. He's with me, Yuko. This is Hisao, a new student. Hisao, this is Yuko, the school librarian. Pleased to meet you! Hisao? Right, Hisao. Pleased to meet you too, Hisao. For a second, she visibly attempts to engrave the name on her mind so she won't forget. Yuko often arranges to import foreign books in Braille for me. Would you like to tell Hisao a little something about the library? Lily's innocent suggestion is met with an expression of abject terror. She engraved the name on her forehead, look at that. <laughs> I, please, Lily, I, I can't, I, I don't know what he could be interested in. This is too much responsibility. How it's any responsibility at all, I don't get. But her objection is so sincere, I don't doubt for a second that she would rather disembowel herself on the spot than tell me where the light novels are. But... So, there are a lot of books in Braille here. I attempt to save the day by asking the first thing that pops into my head. It seems to work, at least partially, as Yuko seems to... not exactly relax, but at least look slightly less tense. Well, I think about a third or a fourth of Yamaku's library is either in braille or audio. Makes sense, given all the blind students that'd be here. If it's only that, how come this library is so big in the first place? Um, well, we get a lot of new books regularly because the library is adequately endowed. That's probably why. And they spend more money on new books than on my salary. And then I have to organize and sell all of them. It's so troublesome and I waste so much. I wish I could quit this job. Huh. A very awkward silence follows this revelation of too much information. Um, I'll go check the aisles then, if you don't mind. It's probably best for all of us if she doesn't keep talking to me. I can fix her. No, you can't. Very well. Meanwhile, you go. I would have those books if it's all right with you. My first impression was right. The library is surprisingly big. Ambling down the narrow aisles, I study the spines of the books in random order, occasionally sliding one out to read the blurb, taking it with me if it looks good. In a few moments, I have a respectable stack of books in my arms. I guess I'll never be stuck, stuck for choice here. The normality of the library sinks in. Sure, there are large print and braille books scattered throughout, but it is what it is. A library. It's as if the calm mood from the room I had tea in with Wooly stuck with- snuck in with us here. Unless it was here to begin with. Something about that puts me at ease, just like before. I reach the end of the aisle and find a collection of desks, set up for study or personal reading. Going a little further though, I discover a nice little quiet corner at the back. While the rest of the library has the odd student sitting at a desk, either reading or stealthily sleeping, the back is pretty much deserted. 
As I glance around, I see someone who I recognize sitting on one of the several beanbags. She's so she's kind of silly looking. She's kind of a silly looking feller. It's the dark haired girl from my class. The one who snuck out of the classroom earlier. She's reading a book, keeping it close to her face, which makes her look like she's really into it. From the way she was acting today, I had her pegged as more of a delinquent than a bookworm. In fact, her mysterious disappearance from the class raises all sorts of whys in my head. Intrigue floats slowly but surely towards the surface, and before I know it, I'm walking towards the mysterious long-haired girl. I guess there's no harm in introducing myself as I would with anyone else. She's the classmate, after all. Walking over to another beanbag, I take a seat and lay my books beside it. That's rude. Don't introduce yourself in a library. People are reading. Stop that. Don't do that. That's rude. That's rude. The girl starts looking scaredly up at me from underneath her fringe. This is the first time I've seen her this close. Underneath her long, dense bangs, I can see that part of her face, at least a third, if not a half, is pretty badly scarred. My eyes are immediately drawn to the scars, subconsciously peeking past her hair until they meet her own eyes. For a second, I'm shocked and divert my eyes to the book in her hands before I realize that looking away probably only makes it worse. It takes too many seconds to collect myself and remember what I walked up to her for. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to startle you. Hi, I'm new here. Hiso Nakai. We're in the same class. You'll get burned or rejected? Samuel Hedge, thank you! She tastes like bacon. Ex Angels, thank you. Did you know that Elon Musk is planning to use Neuralink to cure blindness? Basically, it's going to allow the brain to interface with inter artificial eyes. That would be very cool and very based of Elon Musk. It's Eb, thank you. Fix her. No, she's perfect as is. Anon, thank you. Since you've already met both Shizne and Lily, I'd like to point out that Helen Keller was immune to flashbangs. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. Good night, gaming. Thank you. I was Team Misha until I heard your Lily voice. This has to be your best work yet. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Doug, thank you. Librarian is peak girl failure. Kino taste. Also, Lily's best girl. I'm guessing the librarian can't be... Can't be seduced. Koi, thank you. Only complaint I remember having with this game as somebody with Kenji tier vision is that Lily's cane is still way too short. She'd be tripping and bumping into stuff all the time. Oh. Rip. Better thank you. I'm gonna need chat to make an app for dating hot blind chicks. Good strat to date way out of your league. Oh my god. Malice, thank you. I read that. CS, thank you. Pippa sounding real breathable. What the fuck? Maisel Cloudy, thank you. Pippa's Lily voice got me acting up. Person with Japanese name, thank you. Lily is nice and all, but when we talk about plans for her future, I don't know. She seems to have no vision for her future. Oh my god. John Sutton, thank you. Big fan here. I think you're an American hero. You're a voice for the people's freedom. The message you put out and the people you reach is nothing less than a miracle from God. Keep on ripping, Pippa. Bro, I'm just, I'm, I'm just, a, I'm, what? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Question mark. Plague Doctor, thank you. Hanako is best girl. Can Ash Corp, thank you. It's Lily. Becca Noise, thank you. Portraits of all lost souls. You'll soon be one too. USA Bless. Carolyn Jin Evermore, thank you. Praise it, brother. Most normal super chat, most normal super chat. Melos, thank you. Someone gave Hanako a HUD voice. She was technically half right. What? What? Uh, Carolyn Jane Evermore, thank you. I've been given cursed knowledge, so you might. Have it as well. Do not read Misha's laughing as Warrior Waluigi. <laughs> Good night, thank you. How are you, Pippa? You have it. Please be kind to these girls. Forgive me for the booba comment. Last stream, your neck was so long, you giraffe. Thank you, thank you. Dick to Dick, thank you. He made very quiet now. I, I feel like I missed somebody's birthday super chat, but I'm not seeing it in the list. Hmm. Ah. Very strange. Okay. Um... I feel like we should apologize, but then if we do, she won't be impressed by our manliness, right? I don't wanna... I don't wanna apologize. You apologize to me, bitch, for not addressing me when I entered the room. Haha. <laughs> I'm learning how to raise girls. Selena Nada, thank you. Hey, Pippi Palmer Nickel. If there was a phase dating sim, where would the player character meet you? Walmart. Sorry, Malmart. The W flipped into an M. Lupus Alpha, thank you. Sawa made Misha a valley girl. It fit too well. Let's see here. No, I should have chose the other one. No, oh, well. Oh, well. The real saint, thank you. Hi, Pippa. Love your streams. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. I immediately messed it up. I immediately apologize. 
This is... Ted, this is just real life! This is just real life! I dump it... I dump it up in my head and I'm like, yeah! Yeah! I'm gonna... I'm gonna... I'm gonna be brave! And then I'm like, sorry. Excuse me. Sorry. Uh, excuse me. Sorry. Sorry. Uh. <laughs> God damn it. God damn it. <laughs> sorry. I didn't mean to startle you. It's... It's okay. The girl certainly doesn't look like it's okay, but I let it slide. So, um, do you mind if I sit here? She seems to be very uncertain whether it's okay or not for me to sit, but she finally nods, just a little. Uh, okay. I take the seat next to her, and she hides herself behind her book. Life, Life of Pi. Never heard of it. So, uh, sorry again for startling you. I'm Hisao. She looks up from her book, stalling a little before replying. I... know... We... are in the same... same class. Her speech is stilted and so quiet that it's barely audible even in the still library. Somehow, I think that my delinquent impression of her was wrong. <sighs> Hanako... I'm... Hanako... I resist the urge to say that's a nice name, just to have something to say, but really, it's the only thing that I can think of. I feel like an idiot. Everyone here must be used to being different to each other. And here I am, being all bothered and fussed out about that kind of thing. Don't let me interrupt your reading. I'll just check these books if you don't mind. She nods a little and sighs a little sigh of relief. Hmm. So, I try to read the covers and the introductions of the books I picked up, and she buries her face in her book. Uncomfortable silence consumes us. My eyes still wander to her direction, and I sneak peeks at her flowing hair and the scars it's hiding. Space Kai, she's a smoldering beauty. Shut up! After I realize, After a while, I realize that she's doing the same thing and only pretending to be immersed in Life of Pi. Her gaze is not inquisitive at all, though. It darts around like a scared rabbit. When our gazes finally meet, the chain reaction is unstoppable. She stands up forcefully from the beanbag and takes a deep breath. I... I... I? I've gotta go do something! Without warning, Hanako takes off and runs towards the counter. Her hair-like takeoff catches me so off guard that I don't manage to go after her until she's got a good head start. By the time I reach the counter, she's nowhere to be seen. Lily and Yuko are happily chatting away. Knowing that I won't be able to catch Hanako myself, I approach the girls. This might be they sir. Oh, happy, happy birthday, Mercedes! Happy, happy birthday! Hey, did you see, uh, notice a girl run past here? Uh, maybe. What did she look like? Long, dark hair, kind of shy. She had, well, some scars on her face. <laughs> you wouldn't be talking about Hanako, would you? Yeah, that's her. I saw her reading and tried to talk to her, but I think I scared her off or something. Oh dear. Yuko, would you excuse me? I had better try and find her. Sh sure! Oh, I'll just hold on to these until you come back! Um, what's going on? I'm sorry, but I'll have to explain it to you some other time. Alright, I'll see you later then. Did MC screw up? MC fucked up so bad. Oh no. Lily hastily grabs her cane and hurries out of the library, leaving me alone with Yuko. I don't think I'll ever get the hang of this place. Did I do something wrong? What did you do? Nothing. I was just looking for some books and then she got this fit and ran off. The most offending thing I can think of was that I might have looked at her general direction a few times? Well, 
she is a very timid girl. You have to be very careful around her. She can be very jumpy, I think. She's not accustomed to talking with other people. Isn't that a bit... strange? I wonder... It's just how she is, I think. Yuko doesn't sound all that convincing. Then again, maybe this is the norm around here. Everyone has their own problems, or else they wouldn't be here. But how should I feel... But how should I deal with these people? Forcing myself to act overly casual only makes me feel phony. Like I was supposed to be ignoring the elephant in the room. Yuko fidgets, looking like she wants to say something to that, but resists it. I think it's an elephant only if you feel that way. I guess she doesn't have a good sense of self-restraint. It makes me smile, and she blushes heavily. Did, did that sound stupid? No, no, it sounded really wise. I guess you're right. It's more about me than anyone else. Neither of us has anything else to add, so Yuko fills the silence by shuffling some papers around. People who have papers on their desk really like to do that. Did you find any books? I should be closing soon. I mean, this library should be closing. I have to do it. I hope that's not too inconvenient for you. Oh, yeah, I want some books, but I left them over there because... Uh, I'll just go get them. I fetched my stack of books from beside the beanbags while Hanako and I were sitting... Where Hanako and I were sitting and returned to the counter. Oh, you read a lot, don't you? And I surprised myself with that too, honestly. At least, when I really think about it. I had a lot of free time earlier this year, so I just kind of... started reading books to fill that time. I couldn't do much else. I see! But she doesn't say anything else and just checks out my books for me. I guess this is what they call tact. I'm unfamiliar with such a word. Such a concept. This is beyond me. Can somebody in chat explain to me what tact is? Holding the library books with one arm, I trowel my pockets for the key to the door. A sudden sound from behind me startles me, making me nearly drop the books I'm carrying or the key that I almost managed to get into the lock. It's a D&D &D class. Ah, that makes sense. I have never played that one before. Who is it? I turn around to see who's talking to me. It's Kenji. You <laughs> think Chad knows me better? True. He seems to be in a friendly mood, although the light glinting off his glasses in the dark gives him a sinister look. It's just me. This makes him pause and lick his lips nervously. Who is me? I don't know anyone called me. Are you some new guy again? His voice is suddenly strained and quick. Yes, but we've met before. Yesterday. I don't think so. I would have remembered someone who I only met right yesterday. When was that? What day is today? I try to ignore him. Is he joking or what? Prove that we met before! You, you live across the hall? You're Kenji? Kenji jumps back, his eyes filled with an uncomprehending fear. How did you know my name? Damn, this could only mean one of two things! Either we have met or, and you're telling the truth, or I just can't remember it, you're a spy! He pauses. A psychic spy! His eyes dart around me, trying to peek into my room. Although it's hard to believe he can see anything through those thick glasses. His mood swung from friendly to manic in less than a minute. I'm not psychic. How do I know that? I'm not a mind reader. Kenji points a finger in my face damningly. I'm like you! Stop that, man! We met yesterday! What's wrong with you? I live in this room! Lies! If you think you can pass his east out because I'm completely blind, you're sorely mistaken! You don't even look like him! I mean, the resemblance is real, real slim! Maybe at a distance, but who do you think you're kidding? I want to grab him by the shoulders and shake him. Exasperated, I rub my eyes and let out a heavy sigh. Stay there! Ah! Kenji comes closer, one careful step at a time. I stay still, lest he assault me physically. Although, I doubt he could do much damage, even if he did. Oh, wait, I see it now! Damn, it really is you! Sighing again, and then once again for good measure, I step backwards, just in case. What's up, man? You don't look too good, I think. Something wrong? 
I don't know. I just had something stupid happen to me. A few stupid things, actually, even if you discount this one. I can't get a proper touch on the other people here, and I have no idea if it's because of me or because of them. I don't know why I'm telling this to Kenji. It's not like we've had any real contact. That's rough, dude. Yeah, I'm sorry about calling you a psychic spy and all, but you can never be too careful. It's the hard reality we live in. I'm starting to think that Kenji isn't necessarily living in the same reality as the rest of us. You see? That's how it is! This world! There's no justice, you see? Even when I lose, I win because I don't lose the lesson! What does that even mean? It doesn't matter! He dismisses it flatly with a wave of his hand. So what happened? Why the long face? Do you have the long face? Uh, it's nothing. I just scared some girl off accidentally. Literally, too. Like, she actually ran away from me. It was my fault, really, I think. I'm not really used to all this yet. A girl? A cute one? Cute. That's a hard question. She had a nice body and really beautiful hair, but the face. I guess it could go either way. I think she was pretty cute. She was pretty cute, chat. Ricky, thank you. It's Ev, thank you. He's just like me for real, for real. Prowl, Yasto, thank you. Kenji is in fact a you Pipero. Max Angel, thank you. Fun fact, Hanako is also the name of a ghost said to haunt school bathrooms. That's why they call her Toi... To... Toire no Hanako-san. Hanako of the toilet. Uh, Roro Shady, thank you. It's my little video. Uh, real sit, thank you. Okay, I got up. She was pretty cute. She's pretty cute. Yeah, cute, I guess. I knew it! There are a lot of cute girls here! A strangely disproportionate amount! I believe this is one of the dark secrets of this school! I tried to warn you, man, but did you listen? I don't remember any such warning. Dark secrets? Yes, dark secrets! Extremely dark like a black hole! Have you noticed the number of girls in this school is slightly but significantly higher than the number of boys, like 60-40? I hope you had a good stream. It took my son, Raid. Oh, I'm sorry to hear about your son. Uh, he turns his head to the left and stares off into the distance at nothing. Why is it like this? I mean, the entry night doesn't appear to be that bad, but it's a full 20%. One would think that this is a school full of a huge pool of women would be a bad stream, but no. What am I about to tell you? I'm about to tell you, you can blow your mind! Are you ready? I don't know where this is going, but I think I won't be missing much by cutting out now. No. I am not ready. I only get as far as turning the doorknob before Kenji starts talking again, showing that he doesn't really care if my mind is blown or not. I believe that the school is a battleground! The site of a feminist infiltration! The disparity of the number of men to women is a clear sign of how far they have come. In this case, this cold war turns out there will have a in numbers! Just another skirmish of the eternal war against the forces of the feminists that are everywhere! In Japan, women outnumber men! It's not a 60-40 split, but it's only a matter of time, man! Even in America, women are a majority by a hair! They're building up their numbers! Even in the past, the buildup of a military has always been the clearest sign of imminent war! Japan is just the first step! Our economy is badass, and the country itself is small and isolated, yet a huge part of the Pacific in terms of political value! The perfect target! They're so cunning, as expected of women! Soon the day will come when... Kenji's voice trails off ominously. Is why you can't trust them. They will string you along and then kill you just as they killed me! You're gonna end up just like me! Oh, hell no. I can't stop myself from blurting it out. Hey! What the hell does that mean? You said it, not me. It's the best I can think of. So, you're not supposed to say something like that? I am so rude! Where was I? Oh yeah, vast feminist conspiracy! Stop it! Stop! I lost you way, way back there somewhere. Somewhere around the feminist infiltration. You wanted to follow? It's cool. I have some graphs and stuff in my room and puppets. You like puppets? 
No puppets. You don't like puppets? Okay. Graphs are so cool though, right? He speaks energetically, responding almost before I'm done talking. Moving his hands in an animated way as he continues to rant on. This is too strange. I had him pegged as relatively normal, but it's clear that I was wrong. Something on your mind, dude? Just thinking about what it's like to be... Oh. Just thinking about what it's like to be the last sane man in an insane world. Kenji frowns, looking deeply upset. You mean that's you? That can't be, because I'm the last sane man in an insane world. That is my dream. You can't just steal a man's dream. What the hell? There can't be two last sane men. It would invalidate the whole last part, and that part is kind of important. There can only be one, like in that foreign movie where there could only be one, and in the end there was only one dude left because that was the point. I've never seen anyone talk so heatedly and so defensively about absolutely nothing before. Anyway, if you wait here, I can get my grass. I can also get another loose in the dark and talk about conspiracies that the school has tangled us. Quick, if it is my analogy for me. Be a pal! I'm going to bed now. It's extremely late. It doesn't sound like an analogy, but whatever. I like you. You seem like a cool dude. Most people don't understand what I'm talking about when I try to explain the vast feminist conspiracy. Denial's a terrible thing. Later. He claps me on the back and then vanishes into his room so quickly and quietly, it's like he didn't even open the door, but instead walked right through it like a ghost. I don't know if I can fully digest what just happened, so I give up and just go to my room, kicking off my shoes before falling face first into bed. It takes me some time to relax and get up so I can get started on homework. It's because the sheets are cool and comforting against my cheeks, and it feels good just laying there with my eyes closed. The school is like some kind of bizarre and surreal island. It's isolated on top of a mountain, and each person is stranger than the last. I just can't seem to fit in. What irony, one would think that fitting in in a place that's made for people who are unfit for anywhere else would be easy. Maybe I'm trying too hard. Although I say that, it doesn't help me take the edge off. And the words are left echoing off my empty walls. I guess it's not as bad as I expected, though. This place is really more a school and less a hospital pretending it's a school than I thought it would be. If nothing else, the scenery is beautiful. I open one eye, seeing the school books and bottles of pills arranged side by side on my desktop. Maybe this place is too much like a normal school after all. Why is the pillow so well drawn? It's a it's a photo with an image filter applied. Dun dun dun. Hmm. It's probably gonna be a while before we have another good place to stop off at, but I'm gonna I'm gonna keep going. I'm gonna read super chats real quick and then we'll continue until the next like natural stopping point. Um, great new safe state. Mask is so nice. Thank you, Kenji. Was just ahead of time. Look at the dubs. Wings, thank you, bro. Harry Potter gun agenda. Stephen Taunch, thank you. Take your meds, Kenji. The fox, thank you. Hate the bell. I have a huge wave of exams that I'm sacrificing my weekend to st to studying. Can I get a kiss from my Uchi for good luck? Mwah! Good luck. Uh, Ashka Jenny, thank you. Pippa lend Kenji some of your tin foil. Lupus Alba, thank you. Kenji, the 16 year old noticer. Ricky Bizol, thank you. It's Ed, thank you. He's just like me for real, for real. All right. All right. Let's go. I feel very tired this morning, probably because yesterday itself was a very tiring day. On top of that, I woke up far earlier than necessary. After saying hi to Shizne and Misha, I start doing the work as instructed from the board. It already looks like today is going to be heavy. I don't have a problem with that, though. She's a and Misha might jump on me, trying to get an answer about whether or not I've decided to join the student council, even if it's just one day. I wouldn't put it past them to try, and I wouldn't have an answer for them if they do, so this situation is convenient for me. About ten minutes into class, Hanako walks in and takes a seat, but no one looks at her. The teacher doesn't even comment on her lateness. He does, however, stop us to say that we're going to break into groups again. I turn my head and see that she's an and Misha are looking at me. Shizune gives me a smile that is equal parts cute and menacing. This is a smile that says, We have you now! There's no escape! Ita! Looks like we're working together again! Yay! Yay! 
Me shilling sideways while Shizune pushes her desk closer to mine. There really is no escape now unless I were to jump through the window. Jumping out the window isn't the best option, sadly. Cute. What's wrong, Ita? Oh, Ita, have you been thinking about what you said yesterday? You said that you would think about joining the student council, didn't you? It's okay, Hitan. We were talking about it after you left, and it would be rude to expect you to already have an answer for us this early, right? Right? <laughs> I'm so happy you two are able to have a laugh at my expense. And even more pleased to know that you both know how crazy the two of you can be. These bitches crazy. Now that that's over, Shizune snaps back into serious mode and smacks today's assignment with the back of her hand in an overly dramatic and important way. When I actually look at this stuff, it's mostly just reading. In fact, there are only two problems. I almost want to say something about how her rush to get started seems a bit much considering the small amount of work. In fact, she's no Shizune probably knows how little there is and simply doesn't care. Yeah, it seems like the workload doesn't matter to her as much as the fact that there is work. The actual amount of work is unimportant. She approaches everything with the same level of ambition. While I'm reading, I let my eyes wander around the room and catch Hanako trying her hand at solving the problems. It looks like she's working alone. I can't remember seeing her work. Ah, fuck. I can't see. Fuck! Ah! I can. I can't remember seeing her working with other people before. Thinking back to how shy she is, it's understandable. Hey, that girl over there. Huh? Who, Hita? Her, Hanako. Over there. Does she always work alone? I think so, Hita. You feel sorry for her because she's alone? I was just thinking that maybe she could work with us or something. Mm, no, I don't think that'd be a good idea, Hita. M why not? Shitan wouldn't get along with her. Why? Misha shuffles around the question, putting out a laugh that sounds very strange. It's nervous, but still has that littling up and down quality present in everything she says. Just because, Itan. By now, Shizune has noticed our conversation, and it makes me realize again how Misha has been signing everything she's been saying this whole time. This is- this is painful. This is- this feels like some mean girl shit. This- chat, am I crazy or does this feel like some, like, mean girl shit? Like... Like when you're in school and like... They're like, oh, uh, no, we don't really hang out with that person. And it's like... Okay. And then it just like proceeds to be like really awkward and shit from there as well. And it's like, it's like, oh, well, you probably really shouldn't hang out with her either. You know, like, you know, for your own sake. And it's like, well, I think I can, I think I can make that decision for myself, actually. I say, Pipkin Pippa, the worst judge of character ever. <laughs> what, you done? The enemy of my enemy is my enemy? That sounds so harsh. I'm not going to say that. You said it anyway. I know, Hitan. It's fine of you over here. I wonder if this is Misha's way of keeping things fair, since without her, I wouldn't be able to understand the things she's not saying, and vice versa. Is that also why she signs all the time? So there's never a conversation Sizna will be left out of? Anyway, we should start on the problems now, Hitan. Gaslight, check. Gatekeep, check. We finish with time to spare, and I decide to ask if there are any alternatives to the cafeteria, as, frankly, the food so far has been subpar. This sends Shizuna and Misha arguing among themselves about their favorite restaurants. All of them are downtown, so I don't think we even have time to go to all the way... I don't think we have time to go all the way there. And what about the bill? Are they arguing just for the fun of it? Maybe. They seem so distracted by it that they don't even notice the start of the actual lunch break. I look over my shoulder towards the lack of the back of the classroom. Fuck. She seems to be studying her notes from the previous class. It's an odd sight, 
Everyone else in the class is busying themselves with the lunch break. Socializing, gossiping, rearranging desks. The ones with actual boxed lunches mixed in and chattering like everyone else, only interrupted by short, ba short bouts of eating. But when I watch Hanako, it feels like I'm the only one who can see her. Almost as if she was invisible, sort of hiding in plain sight. Is she being bullied? Is she isolating herself from the rest of the class on her own accord? I see her look over her shoulder towards the classroom's rear door. Come to think of it, she hasn't turned a page since I've started watching her. I guess she's waiting for someone? What to do? Oh, shoot. Another choice! Oh. Wait for Shizune and Misha to come to a decision. Read my book. Go talk with Hanako. Save? Oh, nice! This one actually lets you save during choices. Uh, I think I'm gonna leave this off on a cliffhanger. Since it let me save. <laughs> if it didn't let me save, I would not have. But I think this makes a good spot to leave off on a cliffhanger. I have to go use the restroom really bad. I've been drinking a lot of soda and water today. Ya boy! Thank you for the gift pee pee! Thank you, thank you, thank you! Applejack, thank you for the gift pee pee! Wait, was that a gift pee pee? Wait, I think we're coming to the gift pee. Okay, there we go. You want to miss Super Chat List? Yes, please. Fondue, thank you. Kenji Jones, Next Angelus, thank you. There's an anime called World's End Harem where a virus kills off the majority of men. The few men left are given free reign to do any girl they want. Okay, then. The Fox, thank you. All right, I read that one. Then Gold Pippa. Well, it's like right towards the end of stream anyways. So it's like... Yeah, pretty good game so far. Very chill. A little bit more my speed than like Snoot game was, I feel like. I like this more, uh... I like this not to say Snoot game was bad or anything. I did, I was enjoying Snoot game, but this is a bit more like... Sort of like the classic anime visual novel feel that I personally prefer. KMS, thank you! A bit more my speed. Also, lots of cute waifus. Uh, Max, thank you. Congrats, Chicken Pizza, on the KFC sponsorship. Uh, Michael, thank you. Hey, Pip, it's my coworker Chris's birthday. Sing my man, happy birthday. Happy birthday to Chris. Happy birthday to Chris. Happy birthday to Chris. Happy birthday to you. Dragonel, thank you. Thank you. Nah, thank you, Rabbit, for the fun times. I got fired last Monday, so I'm ready for the feels. Let's go. Ouch. Uh, person with the Japanese name! Thank you! Hey, Pips, today is my 27th birthday. I wanted to say thank you for being you. You're the reason why I wake up not thinking about Minecrafting myself. Happy birthday to you! Happy birthday to you! Happy birthday! Don't kill yourself! Happy birthday to you! Yay! Okay, thank you. Is there a Canadian healthcare route? Soft new girl, thank you. Pippo, were you a special ed kid? Nope. Can Ash Corp, thank you. I can't believe we're getting enrolled in phase boarding school. We made it, chat. We made it, bros. Red man, thank you. Pippa, watch out. Misha is a fan of JFK, you. CS, thank you. Why are all the voices telling me to grab the cop's gun? Kim, mom, thank you. Game has a good gameplay balance. Zalra, the goal, thank you. I gotta sleep. Have a good night. Pippa! Timotops, thank you. Take your meds, Kenji. All right. Thank you guys so much for stopping by. The next time that I play this, it'll be on Thursday. But then it'll be a consistent Friday stream after that. Hacker noise, thank you. Time to be a real chat and talk to the girl. Cold acid, thank you. Thanks for the great stream tonight, Pippa. I needed this nostalgia. Oh yeah. So yeah, next next stream of this will be on Thursday, and then every stream after that will be on Fridays. Resident, thank you for the gift PP. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, and there is a playlist already up, so I think you can save the playlist somehow. If you want to keep track of everything. That's it. Thank you, Pippa. It's not my birthday. Can you wish me a very merry young birthday? A very merry young birthday. To you. Yes, yes, you. As you know, thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. That's pretty good. Pretty good stream. Pretty good stream, my book. As in, like, I didn't hurt my throat, which I thought I would hurt my throat, but I did not hurt my throat. So we're good to go. We're good to go. Let's see here. And Koda, thank you. Voice acting was spot on. Thank you. Thank you. I try my best, but I'm not a voice actor, so... I'm just doing what I can. Um... 
Focus Rage Sawa. She's doing 10k karaoke celebration and she's literally Kenji for real, for real. Ben, thank you. Related fun fact, Mary Shetley kept her husband's heart in a box after he died. That's pretty based. Pretty based. All right. Oh, it's so great! Tilda fumbles away, Tilda! 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 Tilda 